AdamandEve.com. I'm talking toys, bondage, lingerie, and so much more. Plus, they have 24-7 customer service, so you can order at 3 a.m. if you ain't coming, if you get me, okay? And if something isn't working out, you can send it back within 90 days, no hassle. And if that's not enough, you can also take pleasure in knowing that 20% of their profits goes to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. So go on ahead and log on to AdamandEve.com. Use the code Tasha K for 50% off one item plus free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Some exclusions apply now, but hurry up and visit AdamandEve.com so they can make you come. Doors open. Really? It stays open for the humidity. I moisture in my ear. steam. No, it opens up all your pores. So you gotta, I gotta constantly do micro needling to close them up because I haven't tried. You sweat all the time. It's really good. It's really good. Micro so it helps to break, break it even new skin. Is that your glass? Yeah, Shaq, you prefer Shima over Fago the Child too, don't you? Oh, she might. Yeah, really it's, it's just like Fago the Child. Like the setup, but uh oh. But the food is better. I think it's oh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, flavor <laughs> wise. Yeah, I'm gonna take Lamine, and it'll be me, her, her daughter, okay. and her. She got her son. So, how old is he? Nine months. He's ten months. Oh, yeah, he's okay. a preemie. My son gonna be like, baby. <laughs> 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 so, you ready for another one? No, we're done. He's he's neutered. <laughs> if I get pregnant, it's gotta be for my son, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cause it ain't she, she at work right now. I ain't hear that. <laughs> he, ain't right he know my mouth. Listen, um, let me make sure because I wanna. I mean, it's pretty much the same questions. Like it's not uh, anything crazy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So selfie picture. Yeah. Oh no, I forgot. We're gonna get pictures tonight because I I did get a selfie. Well, she did like a. Oh, video. my phone don't work in here anyway. It don't work. You need to get on the Wi-Fi? I know I did. Yes, sir. Okay. You ready? How does she do that? Yeah. There you go. Does she do it like that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Let's go. <laughs> so, um, give me one second real quick. Okay. How do you pronounce your last name? Is it Saffold or Saffold? Saffold. Yeah. Okay. Do you get a lot of people that say Saffold? They be like, <laughs> everything but Saffold. Okay. Like, what have I picked up here? All right. Cool. Let me know when you're ready. Because right, I'm ready. I'm about to just tag you real quick. I see you iced out. Like. <laughs> Son hooked the sister up I before see, he kicked the sister out. I see. I was like, he got you iced down. Like, it's real jewelry. I see everybody going to get this piece, too. So it, it, it must have been. He must have some good taste. It's real. We forgot to do a sound check. Hold on. Let me make sure. He watching that damn UFC. He forget. <laughs> he forgetting shit. He's like, oh, my bad. He is so addicted to UFC. Um. All so right, the coffee, water, and the wine. Girl, I tell everybody all <laughs> the time, <laughs> all the time. I said, I don't know whether I'm going to sleep or <laughs> going down. It's funny, I made it the sound. You're not gonna do a sound She's check? Good. She's good. Okay, perfect. We ain't screaming at home. Okay, I love those mm-hmm. LV stockings. Your girlfriend gave me these, child. I was like, they those was a are birthday cute. Gift. Thank you, girl. Okay, so listen. We have the mama in the wine cellar. I got to tell you, I have been waiting. Wait, you got to toast. I, I know, toast, toast, toast to, to the mama. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll give you your name in a minute, but everybody knows you as the mama. So, we good? She's so Okay. Okay, you you on my ghetto loud? No, you can be as loud as you want, honey. Okay. Yeah, this is... this. Okay. All right. So no, it's cool. They're gonna they're gonna see all this. This is what the wine cellar is about. So even though I just introduced you as the mama, they're gonna see him come in, move the mic, and then we're gonna keep it going. We like to keep show it everything. Real. Keep it yeah. real. We like to keep it all the way real here. I don't want nobody saying we chopping screwing nothing. Okay. <laughs> Ain't no okay cut beat her at no, none of that. So um, I've been wanting to talk to you for a minute now, and I'm so glad. I'm I'm actually honored that you chose my platform. So Absolutely. you could have went a lot of places, and I'm sure you got hit up by everybody. I, I, you know what? I was like, I need to be able to be as comfortable and talk to a sister to sister 
a mother to a mother. Yes, absolutely. And that was it. Okay, okay. I've been holding uh, your son, Jonathan, all the way accountable. Because I was just like, the way... I was like, she didn't raise him like this. There's, there's just no way. And there's so many misconceptions out here on the internet. So real quick, before we really dive deep, okay, I just want to introduce you, Miss Carlissa Saffold. I had to ask you how to say your last <laughs> name. Because I was like, is it Saffold? But it's Saffold, okay? My husband is pot jamming. Okay. Hot <laughs> jam, man. I'm swipe drive, fearful and sexy, even or <laughs> He can't talk, man. Duncan Shen. <laughs> Listen. Um, so you are the mother to Blueface, Jonathan Porter. Um, the only mother. So ain't no stepmamas involved. It's just He actually did have a stepmom. He did. Mm-hmm. But she ain't around no more. He had more. a stepmom for quite a while. But she ain't around no more. No. She oh, okay. Around. That's what I thought. That's what you don't no. you the mama. Yeah, I'm the mama. Okay. So I'll be the, I'll be the mama. <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta tell you, you look so young. Thank you. I you, work so hard at it too. You don't look like nobody's mama. Thank you. Like you don't look like I'm. I'm sure life was as a single mom because I just got finished speaking to your daughter Callie, and she said, you know, you were a single mom raising three kids, and you know, you, I'm. I'm sure you don't. You definitely don't look through what you've been through because it's not easy raising three kids. <laughs> By yourself. God did this, cause baby, when I tell you, and you still going through it. I got it. three. Yeah, two boys and a girl. So and this is definitely the grace of God. Yeah, she serving. talked about your oldest, Andre, who mm-hmm. just got home a couple years ago. Yeah, from serving a pretty uh, long bid mm-hmm. in prison. So, um, I if you don't mind, I want to talk about that a little later. You okay. know what I'm saying? I I want to know. Everything about you, because like I said, there's so many misconceptions about you on the internet. People are getting bits and pieces. You know, when he uploads a live, your son blue face. When Kashawn uploads a live, when your daughter uploads a live, then you upload a live, and then everybody putting their two cents in, and they don't know. They don't know you. They, they only know they bits don't know and I pieces. Wear this cape. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know I wear this cape, baby. <laughs> So I, I just want to spend some time with you in the wine cellar. Trust we're gonna open up another bottle. So you okay. know, me and your daughter was drinking all that's, this. But that's, we, I said, yeah, this is the place. Yes, this. absolutely, absolutely. We're gonna toast one more time. Listen <laughs> to the mama <laughs> in the wine in the wine cellar. So listen. Um mm. so tell me, like, what was it like raising? Because I mean, I, I know you probably get this all the time. So, and I know your relationship with your son now very different from your son growing up because you know him as Jonathan what do you call him I call him Jonathan and then when he's acting like blue face I call him blue face oh so there's two different faces there's definitely two different faces okay okay so let's talk a little bit about you as as just as a woman as a black woman as a mother as an entrepreneur let, let's start with you first, okay? Tell us about Miss Carlisa the Mama. Like, I'm gonna go. Hi. I'm gonna start at the beginning, then. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I was 17 when I first had my first son. Andre. So I've been a mom. Okay. Forever. Um, and then my mom and my dad um, weren't the best parents, so I said, literally at like 13 years old. I got in a closet and I prayed for children, 10 of them. And I said, you know what? I'm going to be the best mom that I can ever be just because of them. Oh, wow. And I literally, I I mean, I literally got in the closet with the shoes up my butt and everything. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to stand on this. um, And that's what I'm going to do. I didn't ask God for anything else but children. And I wanted 10 children. So I was serious. But you got three. I got three. Well, did you stop at three? I stopped because the Lord stopped me because my um, I had C-sections. Okay. So by the time you get to three, they're like, okay, we got to tie you up. You can't keep doing this. Okay. It is a lot on your body when yeah. you have C-sections. Okay. Thank God. Cause so, so were you, you were a young mom. I was very young. I was 17 when I started. I had my first son at 17. How did your parents take that? Um, but Like I said, they had to take whatever because they weren't. They weren't, my mother had a drug problem when I was younger. Um, thank God that she's delivered herself from. She's mm-hmm. amazing now. Um, 
Um, but she has she had her struggles and she came out of it. Well, shout out to the mama's mama for yeah. Shout out to the mama's mama getting clean and, yeah, and turning her life that's around. A, God is rough, good. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, child. I, <laughs> God is good. So it was pretty rough on you. I don't um, know if I could have came back from that. But okay. so you know, long story short, um. I got started having the kids at 17 after that prayer. So the Lord was right on me. He was fast. He didn't care okay. about no husband or none of that. Okay. So I'm in the motion and then, you know, I'm in love. I'm running around acting like a crazy person mm. like Krishan. Oh. Literally. My sister called me the other day and was like, <laughs> <laughs> your son got you a Carlissa, huh? From the 1990s. How so you feeling? You were just like her. Well, I mean, yes, her mom, when you think about it, <clears throat> Krishan's mom, everybody laughed when she debuted her mom. And I didn't think it was funny. No, not funny at you all. You know, because obviously this woman uh, is still suffering, still going through it, and that's not anything to laugh at. Um, and so and you definitely see the, the – we see Krishan's mom, we see her. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so for you to say that, like that your, your son – um, is now dating a younger version oh, yeah. of, of, of your personality, oh, yeah. of your, you know what I'm saying, at the time. And that just comes from, like, all the trauma of, I try to explain it to my kids, when you're dating somebody who's been betrayed by the person who brought them into this world, you got to be careful. We're dangerous people. Because we've been betrayed by the person who brought us into this world. And at that age, and you're not a mom yet, you don't really understand. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's no parenting book. My mom had no book. She probably had less, you know, information on being a mom than I had. She was 18 when she had me. Mm. My dad drove her crazy, and then she ended up with somebody who introduced her to drugs and, you know, downhill from there. Okay. Thank God she's up here. I always give her a praise because I see some parents and people that this drug you know, literally takes them out. Okay. But yeah, the, the betrayal of your own mom, it can definitely cause some serious trauma. I literally had to go to counseling. I had to stay in church every Sunday. It's, it's a process. How long and, do you think it took you to overcome a lot of that anger and hurt as a, that you, you know, that was a result of your there's childhood? There's still pain there that I deal <clears throat> with. Like for instance, I literally, I ain't going to go there because that ain't necessary. But probably up until a couple years ago. Okay. Where, you know, those triggers, there's, you know, triggers that you deal with forever. They don't ever go away. You just have to learn how to balance them. Okay. And somebody probably just needs to get her some help to balance those triggers because they're very painful. You black out and everybody's a target and murder, yeah. murder, kill, kill. You know, yeah. you just you feel so angry and so abandoned. And that's a that's a serious pain. Okay. So you were a fighter. Oh my God! Look at my hands. Oh. <laughs> at will. Like my sister was. She was. I don't even talk to her right now. I'm so mad. Like that she called me to tell me, look in the mirror. That's you all over again. Punching John the way she punched him. I done punched every boyfriend I had like that. Even my husband right now. Just like that. Oh, so man. I don't. I don't fault her for where she's at with her situation as much as I fault him. You didn't have a mother that was on drugs. You had a mother that caught your footballs when the coaches or the, you know, the people didn't show up. You had a mother that was on the field with you and your sister day in and day out. You had a mother who drove to the prison for your brother, knew each, um, each of the officers that worked with my son mm -hmm. by name, some of them by phone number. If I couldn't get a hold of my son, I knew who to call. I knew who to talk to when they got off work. I made sure that I was inside that prison with him. So so you were mom and dad. Mom and dad. Okay. I mean, however, they did have their dads. and But, you know, when you're a single mom, somebody getting your kids every other weekend is a babysitter. That's, that's not a dad. Okay. So Jonathan's dad, Johnny's dad, they would all get them on the weekends. But that's not a dad. By far. Now, did they see you in your rage moments, like when you would fight or or possibly hit their dads or fight with their dads? And did they see you ever get violent? I don't think so, because by the time they got old enough, I was kind of coming out of it. Um, maybe 
maybe maybe a couple times they might have seen something like that but most of the time it, it was when they were way younger okay like me and john's dad literally used to do just like him and Krishan. Liter- oh wow. literally and i would hit him just like that so, so it's something that he's he's obviously used to i don't know that he would ever remember that because i literally raised him like you know the golden child by the time i went through that with my older son I was so on point with him that I was in college, he was in school, and we was grinding it out together. We were, we had a plan. We were a family with a plan. I was Joe Jackson. Okay. I was, you know, Tina. We're going to get to this bag by any means necessary because what they did to my older son was because we were poor. What happened with um, Andre? Um, he was involved in a gang... <clears throat> um, he was involved in some type of shooting, um, and somebody got shot. Now he's and d- he's done his bid. Uh, your your daughter did talk a little bit about that, but only what she she really knew. So yeah, he was out. It wasn't even. It, they tried to say it was gang related. Two kids got into it. One of them, two of the other kids had guns, and he happened to be with a kid who probably saved his life um, by shooting the other person. Oh, my God. So, yeah, he got into a serious situation. Um, <clears throat> he wasn't, he was supposed to get, like, a hundred and something years. Oh, wow. I was able to come up with, thanks to Jonathan again, he was doing some commercials, and we had, you know, a nice little stash in the bank. We were already on the plan. I had everybody, agents, everybody was auditioning. Every all my Everybody in my house okay. was out there pounding the pavement trying to figure it out. Okay. Um, so... When he got in that situation, we didn't have the $50,000 that the lawyer who said, I know that judge, let me go, you know, and give me 50 grand. I didn't have 50. I didn't even have half. Okay. Um, so I was able to come up with like 15 for a black lawyer who felt my pain and went in and was able to reduce that hundred and something year sentence to 13. Oh, uh, actually, okay. 17. He got out 13 for good behavior. Oh, wow. I mean, that's still a long time. Yeah. And he went to jail at what age? He was 16. And how old were you at the time? I was 29, 30. Uh, oh, I couldn't imagine your blood we're, pressure. We're actually 17. I lost my hair. I literally, like, they, they call it alopecia. I call it. It just fell out during the court. Like, every court hearing, I literally was like, oh, God, more hair is coming out. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, we had a plan. The plan was, after he went, um, we all kind of went into a depression. He wasn't just their big brother. It was like a dad. Like, we lost. That's what your sister said. He, yeah. he kept your family together. Yeah. But when he, went, when he went away, obviously, everybody felt it. You know, and as a mom in Los Angeles, which is why I'm, like, I write, um, I'm writing a series, a script, um, to just show all of the different beasts that you tackle as a single mom living in Los Angeles. Nine out of 10 of my friends either lose one of their sons um, to gang violence or to prison or drugs. Nine out of 10 of all my friends that are single moms. We are all faced with this same struggle. So I'm writing this series to show like we ha- these, our kids don't have a boys in the hood. They don't see, you know, what's going on. They don't know they're lacing, maybe possibly, I don't know who could be, but this fentanyl could be a plan, you know, gentrification, perhaps. So I'm writing a series to show, like, my life is with my children has literally been like one lifetime movie after the next. I was going to say, like, <laughs> y'all, f- fuck the the Blue Face Girls Club. Y'all should have been had a reality show. And I told him that, and I was like, what are you doing? Like, we have a plan, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I see myself in, you know, that director's chair with my baseball cap on, yeah. making this thing, you know, so that somebody else can benefit from the pain that we've been through. Yeah. Just keeping my son sane after, like, you know, he was probably not an angel. He's a fighter, too, my mm-hmm. older son. Um, but to go to prison for something that you couldn't control, right. and then your mom can't was save like kill you. Kill or be killed, pretty much. And I didn't really realize what was going on because, you know, he was trying to keep stuff from me. But I drove him to school. I picked him up. I dropped him off, you know. And sometimes there was, you know, 
Well, the only time that I really realized, okay, something's going on here. Like, they were all in my car one day. I was picking them up. I'm just singing to the music. Andre, you're talking about your oldest. My older son was in the car. Jonathan was in the car. Okay. Callie was in the car. Johnny's. And um, all of a sudden, I just hear my son, like, his just breathing, like, panting. Like, he's, like, going crazy in the backseat of my car. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And lo and behold, we I see some guy standing on the corner. He had got jumped maybe two or three months prior. I'm talking about face rearranged. Oh, my God. And that was actually my first time seeing, like, okay, well, did you get into it with just some people? or Because, I mean, we live, like, borderline West L.A. Okay. But they catch the bus for the girls to the east. Okay. I'm not knowing as a mom. I'm just trying to get to work. I'm auditioning for movies. I'm behind Taraji for Baby Boy. Got to mm-hmm. run out because the police got him. You know what I'm saying? So it was just so much back and forth. I was getting dizzy and nauseous. And then they're in the back seat of my car, back to this story. And all of a sudden, I, I see the guys and I'm like, okay, this, something must be up. Don't, don't, I'm pushing the button. Don't, don't let him out of the car. Callie pops the locks, jumps out with a crowbar. John Your daughter. jumps out. He's like seven or eight years old. <laughs> Your she's daughter. like 13. She's a, she's a fighter. She shows up. I got to give it what? to her. She talked about that. I always show up. So. What? Andre has her ready. So when she was out there and she said she was fighting three, four people before she got to Rock, we yeah. can definitely see. Rock knows it too, though. Yeah. Come on now. Let's be for real about it. <laughs> yeah. We could definitely see she went through something before she got that behind whooping. Yeah. Thank God everybody just ended up okay. That's, you know, most important. But that definitely didn't didn't sound right. She pops the locks. They get out. My older son is fighting, like, two dudes. Um, my nephew's in the car, too. He gets out, and he's, you know, trying to get my kids. And then she's got a crowbar helping my older son. And I'm What's just a- I running down the street, like, please, like, you know, because these weren't, like, small kids. These right. looked like grown-up men. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is going on? This is a, a young lady, you know, but she did carry herself, you know, like a tomboy. Obviously, he done mm-hmm. roughed her up and, you know, taught her and John, like, these are the streets. This is what you do, blah, 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 blah. I'm thinking he's in there teaching them with the boxing gloves, you know, like <laughs> how to just defend themselves. I don't yeah. know you actually having trouble in the streets with people. But yeah, because they do retaliate against the siblings, so he taught them how to. He definitely pretty much protect themselves. Yeah, probably taught them how to use weapons because she's very fluent with all type of weapons. And I'm just like, I haven't ever touched one before. You know, I just Mm -hmm. use these when we were kids. That's what it was. Yeah, of course. I might be a lot older than you. Let me drink on it. No, I mean, eh. I'm forty. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you still ten. You still baby. No, you you down there with my younger son. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but I mean, um, but yeah, we we didn't use no weapons or nothing like that. We we yeah, it was different. you know yeah, we fought. You, you, you got your ass whooped. You got your ass. You you live to see another day. You live to see. We didn't laugh about it. Yeah, like I, and la- you I, la- I laugh about what happened with me and Krishan. I never hit her back. <laughs> I never touched the little girl at all. See, and, that, and that's another thing. So that's why I kind of wanted to establish like what was the relationship like with your kids before the fame and and all that stuff came into play and him having They were like this. When I tell you we were out there together as a team and then when we lost our team member to the prison system, mm-hmm. it was our pure motivation. Mm-hmm. Like my Jonathan by the time he really realized that his dad wasn't coming home, I mean, that his brother wasn't coming home. He was probably, like, nine years old. Mm. So for two years, you know, we're going back and forth to court, and, you know, he's asking, like, Do they, is, is my brother home? And then he had went for a weekend with his dad, and this is, like, two years in, and they just gave him his sentence, and I was going to try to break it to him because mm-hmm. I know he really, really went through it, you know, took it the hardest. Mm-hmm. Um, did, did they let him out yet? And I was just like, well, let's talk about it. And he literally started kicking the back of my seat and just went into this. Oh Let me bring some tissue. Hold on for a second. Said I wasn't going to cry. I know. He went into this temper tantrum. And um, I had to pull my car over and just talk to him and calm him down. Yeah. Um, it's like you were living that moment. I'm going to get you some uh, Kleenex. I got to keep it in here. (sighs) 
it only hurts me because they see me as this bat woman or this cape woman that can fix everything. If it's their grades, if it's their football coaches, if yeah. it's their grades, whatever it is, like I'm hands on, I'm there, I'm taking care of it. I'm talking yeah. to principals and coaches and, you know, even directors when they're on movie sets, like he's not feeling that or, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, we're going to get dragged I'm through sorry. paper towels again. I'm so sorry. We got to get some more cleaners. They dragged me last night for giving the girl damn uh, the same thing. But I like them because they don't mess up right. the makeup. Right, just a little dab. Little dab. Yeah, yeah, those things are nice. They keep the, you know, shine away from the makeup, but they dragging me right. anyway. I, mean, I just want to make you laugh. I just want to laugh. I just want to make you laugh. So, but, um, so he's obviously upset. And do you think at that moment, because, you know, at, at seven years old, eight, nine, that's when a child comes into their own and from that moment do you feel like Jonathan was shaped he definitely wouldn't know it's funny because people be like oh he don't even look happy to be with y'all or he don't even look happy he definitely was like this happy bubbly kid you know growing Mm -hmm. up very always very serious always very determined um but when that happened he definitely like took on a shell like and it was like no more smiles. Everything is about business. And I had the talk with them. I said, look, this is what happened. This is what the state of California did to us. And it's because we're poor, because we're black, and because we're poor. So if you don't want this for your children or for yourself, you better get out here and make every grade count. Every touchdown matters. Every shot you take on the basketball court matters. And that's what it is. So, and if you don't do that, whatever you do, you better give it 110% because it could happen to any one of our kids. Yeah. You know, look at the, the five kids in New York. If you don't have money, you leave yourself open to everything. Yeah. So people are like, oh, you guys are just money hungry. Y'all just like diamonds. Yeah, we like nice things. We do. I appreciate all this stuff. I do. I don't have to have it. And if something were to happen and I had to go pay somebody mm. to do something or get something done, I would give give it up in a heartbeat. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, if it came to one of my kids, they're hungry, they're starving, they need a place to stay here, take it. Do what you got to do. I don't think you should have to explain, like, what you do with, obviously, the success of your family. So... Uh, that, that's the least of my worries because when people got it they, oh that's they, their worries like I mean oh, yeah. she just here for his money I'm like girl that's before money. he became <laughs> yes that's our money yeah. get over it like the yeah. motivation came from the mama's plan yeah because I could have just did him the way y'all mamas did you and made you just think it was okay to just be you know working at Universal or you know not saying that there's anything wrong or belittling anybody's mm-hmm. jobs but I definitely inspired them and motivated them. Do not just go to work. If you got to Uber every now and then, or you got to do this to make ends meet, mm-hmm. to get to where you're going, like your studio time, mm-hmm. you know, you, you might have to work at this place to pay for studio time. Mm-hmm. But don't get comfortable there. And I call mm-hmm. them. You getting comfortable there? What you doing? Yeah. We're not workers. Yeah. We provide jobs. So I definitely motivated and instilled them no different from Serena's dad and mom no different from any other mom who just wants the best for their children so that they are not open to just whatever California or whatever state you're in says this is what it is okay now here's the bag this is what I say it is it's the law you're gonna follow the law with me from now on. I mean yeah Jay-Z just rapped about it on God did's verse like <laughs> you know and if we don't start teaching our children in the community that it's, it's not okay to just be mediocre. It's not okay. That's no, not okay. Not. Yeah. I don't care how you decide to do it, but it's not okay to just stay at the bottom. No. If you don't see yourself at the top, then you're never going to get there. No. And de- definitely, Andre, I, people are like, why do you call him the sacrifice? Because look what we got out of that. Our motivation speech came from that. We got a plan. Yes, Jonathan might be changing the script, but God is in control of the plan. I don't see him out there wilding out and doing the things that he's doing next year. I see him being the quarterback that I raised him to be, the leader that I raised him to be. 
Now, when you say quarterback, you don't you, you do you see him going back to playing football? No, I just see him. Or and when I say that, speech. I just like you know you don't yeah. play football unless you know when we when he decided to play, he had a knee injury as a child, and I was like, well, you know, he literally his his dad like we were all on board like this is the next Tom Brady. He was like six. Like, we were serious. When we paid the money, you know, we also paid for other coaches and trainers to come in and develop him to make sure that he was the man. Mm -hmm. He had a little weight problem there, but, you know. Wait, he had a weight problem? Too little? (laughs) Too little. He was too skinny. (laughs) He's still skinny. I'm thinking, weight problem? Where? Like, (laughs) I'm thinking, well, you know, my family got, you know, a little meat on our bones. You're going to get some meat pretty soon. My son little like that because, you know, his daddy little. So I'll be like, football, ah, let's go soccer. Right. (laughs) He chose that. Nobody running into you, like he chose that. He, him, and his little friend, they went to try out, and he was gung ho after that. You know, he played with um, Biggie Son. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. That was his first. um, And Biggie Son actually hit him and knocked the ear out of him. Because you know, Biggie Son was a big boy, even at like six and seven. Yeah. So that was the, our day to decide, you still want to do this? And he's like, oh, I love it. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, he's crazy like me. It was in a general rush. I love it. Yeah. So it's, it's safe to say that he has somewhat of a normal childhood until his brother went to prison. Yeah. Okay. I would um, say that's probably the most trauma. I mean, I did like 14 days. Um, what you do 14 days in jail for my one of my female friends and I'm the most transparent person like y'all gonna get <laughs> I'm not gonna ever lie to you I'm not gonna sugarcoat it I'm not gonna make yeah. it like oh I did such a great job with my life no okay. I'm here to testify I'm here to motivate I'm it's here okay. to encourage yeah, I don't been to jail four times Probably for the same thing. We're going to get to that. <laughs> so my best friend, who I was calling myself into a, I don't even know what you call that. It was like a tri try thing. Like, you Y'all know. was in a relationship? We wasn't really in a relationship. We just was trying stuff. Okay. It was our. Was it it was a my man? best friend. Was it a no, man? she was a girl. Okay. No, no, no. I'm saying was a man involved, though? No, it was no man. It was just so me it was and her. You, it was just you and her. Right. So I'm thinking that when I heard try, I'm thinking... You know, like I don't like poly- to call it lesbian because I, I mean, whatever they call it. We had a okay. situation. Okay. And when it went south, she and I got a man. Now I'm like, girl, I can't, we can't, I can't be broke with you. I got to, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My son is getting in trouble. I got to get out of LA. I met, you know, a man who was very wealthy and had his stuff together mm-hmm. and he was uptown. So I was on the first train trying to get my older son out of there. I literally was probably like a month too late. Mm. literally like we were in the man's house living when the police was looking for him at my house that's how close i was you cannot change god's plan yeah or the direction now you're saying getting your son out of town like well yeah so that he didn't have to deal with whatever was going on in los angeles okay i'm like let's just so you were ready to like just, I didn't even like I, 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 I like I learned to like the guy. I don't want him to feel like I just used him. But that was not somebody I mean, that it I would have what it was. You yeah, mean, that was yeah. not somebody that I would have chose, you know, obviously if, if you know. So I was, you I met was running man. around dating fifty <clears throat> and you know, doing my thing. I yeah. was I was out here having a good time. Yeah. And then he got in trouble and I was like, Ooh, I gotta be serious about life now. Yeah. So I met somebody and he was like, Well, you know, I really like you, blah blah blah. You can come stay out here. And so we kept, you know, going back and forth and then when we made it official and I moved him there it was like the police was looking for him oh damn yeah so how'd you end up in jail because you were hiding your son I was it I ended up in jail because I decided to date a man and be with him and okay. not deal with that anymore and she told my children one somebody that they know that I was gay so you beat her ass I had to <laughs> I did not I, know we're still besties thing. to this day. Like, I did not know this story was going this way because you was like, you probably been in jail for the same time. I was like, what is it? So I'm trying Maybe to Maybe not. Maybe not. Right. No, Somewhat. Not it, was tra- it. it was traffic tickets. <laughs> oh, uh, like, you I know, ain't going to jail for no traffic ticket, girl. Suspended license in Georgia. Because, you know, Atlanta, <laughs> yep. they, they will put your ass in jail for no insurance. Traffic tickets, all that shit. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. So you beat her ass for telling basically... Somebody that you knew. I that went you. in her house and I was like, why would you tell blah, 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 blah. And she had like okay. a, she was cooking and she had like a spatula in her hand. So I thought she was like getting some courage or something. So, you know, I went and crush on on her and, mm-hmm. you know, she called the cops and so next you, thing I know, I was So it was a jail. domestic dispute. It, they, I tried to make it a domestic dispute. They weren't going for it. So what they do? Assault? 
they did a, a burglary with assault. What? Because you broke in to get into the house? I didn't break in, but that's what she, <laughs> that's what she told them. You know I didn't break in. I've been, you know, I've been welcoming yeah. your house. We've been, since we was, you know, 19 years old, besties. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, so that happened, and then I went to jail. So, literally, like, this might be another thing that stings him, too. I wonder if he remembers or if this even is what, you know, causes him his trauma. I give everybody trauma, like, excuses. Like, Jesus gave us all excuses. Like, I don't down nobody else. But when I got out, the guy that I'm dating, obviously, went to try to bail me out, and I'm trying to be like a G, like, 10 grand, hell no, keep the money. I'm going to sit here until, you know, they see that I didn't do anything wrong. Well, 14 days goes by, you know, and he's taking care of my kids. Um, <laughs> well, oh, you know, my mom is helping him. He's taking care of my kids. And 14 go- days goes by, and I'm like, uh, they finna um, just keep me here for life mm-hmm. for really getting into a fight. I get into a fight every week. Like, yeah. what, what are we doing? So, yeah, so he bailed me out after 14 days. That's why I said, yeah, been there, done that. Okay. <laughs> And then I didn't talk to her for like six months. I'm going back and forth to court. She's showing up with all these black eyes and bruises. Trying and to get you in jail? What? And I'm y'all trying are to, still friends to this my day. My attorney said, because you know I'm dating a guy with a little money now, so I got an attorney. You know, yeah. now mind you, my older son is still going through his thing. He hadn't gotten in trouble yet, but he just got yeah. off house arrest. Okay. The day that I got out, he got off house arrest. Mom is in, in, in jail, too. He's on house arrest, and I'm in jail. I'm in there for 14 days praying and talking to God, like, mm-hmm. Kershaw. And and he's listening. He's talking to me back. Like, if you don't get yourself together, I'm going to take these kids that you asked for, and I'm going to do away with them. Now, mind you, I haven't been without my kids ever other than, you know, summer breaks. My grandma might have took mm-hmm. over a year. But for the most part, I've been carrying them on my back, this load in California with the mm-hmm. California rent. Making it happen, you know, through the acting jobs and them acting and just us as a family working together. Yeah. I get out and poor Jonathan is sitting on the couch with the snow on the TV, just staring at it. Because you were gone. Well, he probably was, he was a street runner. Like Jonathan would go with the neighbors and I would have to be looking for him, beating the other kids because they can't find him. Like, why would you, well, you guys are outside playing. You just let him run off. You know, you're supposed to be in the Damn, front. Okay. They was all up and down the block. So yeah, he would get in a stranger's car, Mexican's car, no offense, no mm. no car seats, no no uh seat belts. He just in the car with him. So I got out of jail. He's sitting on the couch. He's like seven, maybe six or seven years old, and he's just looking at the snow, and I was like, never ever again. It like crushed my heart. The cable was off. They just like turned it off in the morning. So he didn't know what to do. Now my older son got off house arrest and just took off. Jonathan came home from school and he's just like sitting there waiting for me. I didn't know if he ate anything. I didn't get home till like 10 o'clock. But he had been just like sitting there in front of that TV for God only knows how long thinking probably like, when's my mom coming back? Yeah. So I'm not saying I was the best mom, but I'm, I damn sure did the best I could do. Okay. So you, you're saying that you, you, when you look at Krishan, because you've referenced her name a few times, telling stories of, you know, you I didn't really realize it until my sister said it and it clicked. Yeah. Like, you know, this whole time I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's so crazy. She's a nutball. And yeah. I'm like, it's the trauma. Yeah. I used to have nightmares about my mom. What? Not making it home. Those nightmares will drive you insane. Like, dang, something happened to your mom. Because of the situation she's in, you know? Mm. I understand. So I'm pretty sure those <clears throat> nightmares and that trauma is like, there's no room for error. No, let's let's back up a little bit. So I'm, I'm glad you established, you know, basically, you know, and, and being very transparent about, listen, you know, this behavior that I'm seeing um, my son surrounded with or even engaging in, like, this is... This was a part of me coming up. And that takes a lot to, I mean, that takes a lot of courage to admit, you know? And so, um, because, I mean, the internet, you know, they have their own, uh, you know, opinions and speculations. It could be a lot, you know, but you could have easily came up here and was like him, 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 her, 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 
But you took accountability and said, I'm so glad that you waited to have this conversation because if you would have got me two months ago when I first got my head kicked in, mm-hmm. it would have been him, him, her, her, him all day. Well, see, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little indifferent about that situation because at the end of the day, you were still mom. You gave them life. And anyone that's in, like, you know, I don't have the best relationship with my mom, but she can never say anybody, me, or anybody in my circle has ever disrespected her. Mm -hmm. You know, I I walk away. I don't answer the phone. Now, a lot of people may think that's disrespectful, but I'm like, before I say something that's disrespectful, or take myself out of character, like, I know myself. And I think a lot of times as children, we are expected to endure things for, just because, you know, you guys are our parents, right? Mm-hmm. However, I think a lot of times as children, we don't, we feel like, well, what I say doesn't matter. <clears throat> so and before I say something that's disrespectful to my mother or to my father, it's best that I just don't answer the phone. Yeah, that's kind because of because I, I am you know, a per, I'm still <clears throat> a person, and, and a lot of people think that you could take, you know, what your parents say. And a lot of times, when y'all say stuff to us, and I'm a mom, and I have to remember this for my child too, it cuts different. Yeah, it, the world can say whatever they want to say about you, right? But when your mom say it or your dad, that shit hit hard. It's like you don't even want to live no more. If I can't make my mom happy or my dad. Why, what, what is there to live for? So it's either I have to kind of step back and create this bubble that I live in because I do it now to this day because my mom and I don't have the best relationship. But I know as soon as she get on the phone, she start talking. It just, it just, I'm, I feel like shit, like I'm not even worth being on this earth. You know what I'm saying? So I think as, you know, for you to come up here and, and have the courage to say, as a mother, as a black mother, as a single mother, not that we're making, you know, I'm making excuses for you. But listen, that was me. So me, I don't see how you take it because, but because you're saying, I understand this. I, I've seen this. I probably contributed to this in some way. That's me. So you have a little bit more grace for it. But me personally, I, I can't take, I'm, there, I'm in there Cali's was, situation. There was, yeah, there, there, some of the story that she's telling is not the truth. And that's the problem that I have with her. And we're talking about because Krishan. I want to believe, yes, okay. I want to believe that it's your trauma and I, her trauma, and I want to believe that it's something that you know I might have hit that trauma. Okay, but when she, I hear her doing all these different interviews and hearing her lie about the story to enhance mm-hmm. why she did it, I mean she's me hot that, right now on the blog, so yeah, you know, they, and you're hot because of us. Let's just be real. You're hot because of the drama that you know well, my yeah. family brings. You know. Kanye, I mean, uh, Kim and them are hot because she did a sex tape. It's just, it is what it is. It happens. Yeah. That's well, she's what it's def- is definitely not famous because of her talent. Right. And that, that's, that's... I mean, she has. She definitely she, has some talent. I mean, yeah. I, can, I will give her that. I don't take ta- that from her. She I had to go look for the songs today. Yeah. Because I was doing, like, even though, you know, there's this her persona... Side, her sister's actually really hot. Yeah. Even though there's this persona and all of this, this, this stuff, the fighting, the, the blue face, all, you know, the domestic violence, all this shit, I had to go and search for her music. Right. Which means I had to go say Christian Rock's music, scroll, where is right. it? Is this a song? Is this her You can't talking? be famous for beating somebody's mama's ass. That's just yeah, my, or my or getting beat up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. Listen, you can't be. Or, or getting your ass beat because- it's it's coming both sides. It, it's all about her fighting. She reminds me of a younger version of Jocelyn Hernandez. Mm-hmm. That's that's what, and that, it, the more the media pushes her that way, the more she's gonna use her trauma to keep building that character when it starts to fall short. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's deep. Right and that's there. why I feel like I don't give her an excuse because you're doing these interviews. If you was really about God and you was a real person, and maybe she's just young and hasn't reached that point where it's like, yeah, lying is not cool. Like, it's not yeah, cool. I it mean, doesn't give you... Because Jonathan never, ever told her to beat me. I had to play the whole thing back in my mind. And honest to God's truth, on my, my right hand on the Bible, he said, if you throw another water bottle at her, 
how would you feel if I let her get on you or if I let her um, hit you back, basically? And you know me as a black mom, I dare you. I dare you. But what what happened was I was going in on my son, which I'm going to do regardless. I don't care if I'm 50. Look, I know I'm old. When mm -hmm. I shave my JJ, I get a pain in my stomach that lets me know I'm 50. You you need to bend over right when you shave that though, okay? You can't just bend over like you did back in the day. You got to sit down on your, yeah. on, your, on your bitch and be 50. I'm not, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to be younger than what I am. I'm grateful. But Jonathan did not tell her to do that to me. And he was probably just as shocked as I was because I literally, between the kicks, looked up at him and his eyes were just as big as mine. Tell us about because I don't think the fight is not online. I, I didn't see the fight. Well, I thought he was videoing it because he was on his phone when we were arguing. So I'm not sure if he videoed or not. I don't think that fight He's is a, online. I think he would have played definitely it definitely with your daughter yeah. and Krishan <clears throat> and our poor husband. I was like, oh, my God. Um, it's online, but the fight, the only, the only way we know about the fight is because you guys came online to talk about it. And Krishan talked about it. She was like, yo, she threw two, two, uh, water bottles at me in a glass jar or something like a that. Gatorade so, a Gatorade a bottle. And it was a bottle. weed jar. So the what, weed what? jar. I, you, I can't, I'm not a, she was across the room. It wasn't, I'm not, I don't play yeah. baseball. Now this, it might've grazed her. It didn't touch her enough for her to, but again, I'm going to give her the trauma pass. Cause she had every right once I threw it, but it was after it was 50, at least five minutes had went by before okay. she decided, before her Hennessy had said, knock this old lady down. See, that's where I have the problem at. So let's back up a little bit because, like, there's been so much that happened even up until the fight. So let's start with, you know, your son's success. I want to back up just a little bit. Okay. So when he became successful... Did you notice, and I had the same question for your daughter, did you notice a change in his behavior? Was he more aggressive? Was he more push off towards y'all? Or was he the same Jonathan that you knew coming, you know, as you raised him? I think when he first started, he was so overwhelmed by it all. And I, Callie always says I make an excuse for him. He my baby. I don't give a damn. Call it what you want to. I try to tell the truth the way I perceive it. Okay. You know, I'm not trying to create a narrative that makes him, you know, any better than what he is. But okay. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's always had a love for money. He couldn't go to school without five dollars. He had to have a dollar in his pocket. It was a strange love for money. But I was able to put that love for money, stop it from stealing, which I was very grateful for because. So he was, he was doing things that he shouldn't have been doing. He would go doing in my purse money. or go okay. into my mom's purse. And this was very, oh, shit. this we was, all done did that. but no, he was like three or four. Oh no. And he just had to have a dollar. He just had anxiety <sighs> okay. if he didn't have money on him. So I started telling him, you know, this is what you could do to earn money. Mm -hmm. I was able to reroute that. Cause now I'm seeing like, wow, this is how people become thieves. If it's not, you know, if it's not caught early enough. Okay. So basically I would, you know, talk to him and tell him like, you know, this is what you could do to earn money. He figured out once he figured out how to earn money, he didn't take anybody's money out there purse anymore. I even tried to set him up to see like if he would take it, okay. you know, cause I was do you, worried. Do you feel like you create, you, you kind of, you know, because of the, the family's plan was to, you know what I'm saying? To make it like you were to Joe Jackson. Do you feel like that kind of pushed him to, to want it more? than he should have and, and him and he would, con you know, I guess result to measures of taking the money any way that he could? I think maybe it's possible because when he got the offer from the label that he signed to, I went and countered that offer with his cape on and he went to New York and met with, I believe it was Universal. I'm not quite sure, but a friend of mine who's an attorney. Um, okay sent him on another trip to get another offer, which was almost three times the money. Okay. I believe that he chose the route he went because um, WAC appeared to wear the same cape that I wear. He always referred, like, you and WAC are just alike, which tells me, okay, that's how you got my son on board. <clears throat> okay. I don't knock that at all. How, um, how, what is your relationship with Wax? We used to be very close and talk on a regular basis. You're dealing with my son. I like to know, you know, what what's going on, where things are at. Um, how can I help? Is there anything I need to talk to him about? And he was usually very, you know, 
we had a great relationship, I thought, at first. Okay. Um, obviously, he's my son's manager, so that will put me, you know, if, mm-hmm. you, if we're not getting along, then obviously, you know, there's no relationship between us. I don't think it should be that way as adults, as parents. I think we should have still been able to keep a, a relationship that, you know, because I it, when he couldn't get John up for court or whatever, he would call me. We worked together as a team. Still, as an adult, to get him to do the right things that he needed to do, whether it was traffic court or, you know, whatever he had to do, we had to work together to get it done. How, how did you take Jonathan not pursuing football and becoming a rapper? First of all, what, what age did you find out that he wanted to be a rapper? So I have finally met a man that I like. That okay. was like tall, dark, and handsome. Well, you know, a little light, yeah. but tall. Okay. Tall part was there. Very, very great guy. Okay. And I was like dating him right before Jonathan was graduating. Just going flying. He was from where I'm from. So I'm from Ohio. So okay. I'm going back and forth. I'm dating him. And Jonathan's in his last year of high school. Um. He flies back with us before he goes to college, and okay. we kiss him goodbye and send him to school, and now I can be a grown-up. He gets to college, and I'm just like, oh, God, I did it. They're all in school. <clears throat> Even my older son is, was in college in prison. Okay. You know, Callie went to college. She had a Division One scholarship. Blue had a scholarship to Fayetteville, and every I felt like, okay, I, I did this. I, I, I made it. 90 days, we go to one football game, and I'm just thanking God to no end, like, this is it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he's going to get picked up from here. He's probably going to go to Duke because he's had other people looking at him just waiting for his weight to get up and him to get a little polished. Mm-hmm. Um, that didn't go so well. He played a game or two and got into it because they wasted his whole year. He's, he's big on respect and, mm-hmm. you know, what you say, you do. Okay. Um, so when that didn't work out, I thought he was still going to school. They put the senior back in this spot. So I thought he was still going to school. And I had no idea that he checked out and left. You know, he's an adult. They don't call you and tell you, hey, lady, your son left school. You know, two weeks go by. I'm, I'm feeling my man now, you know, and I'm trying to not call as much and, you know, have a life of my own. And so I called to check in two, maybe two, three weeks Um, with the coaches just see how everything's going and what you know how he's developing there and they're like well he left I'm like what do you mean he left he went to the store what do you mean he left like he just said he didn't like it here so he went back to California oh okay so he went back to California and he went to his girlfriend's house I didn't get a call from her mom and this was Jaden yes okay so yeah, girlfriend of, you know, since she, he was 14. I didn't get a call from anybody to say, you know, John's not at school. So, you know, he's out of school for three or four weeks, and I don't even know it. Now, these are people I've taken care of, Jaden, since she was 14, and I'm going to say that I don't care till this wig falls off. Your mom lets you come to my house every single solitary day. I'm not talking about we missed a day. I'm talking about she didn't come on Thursday. She came every day. They did homework at my school. I instilled in her. Jonathan is going to college. He's not having a baby. You can't come over here without birth control pills. You need to go talk to your mom. Once I realized, oh, shoot, they're they're doing grown-up stuff. Mm -hmm. She went and got her permission slip from her mom and her says she was on her birth controls. I obviously couldn't tell when she was there or not because I'm in school at night I'm in college you know trying to graduate Mm -hmm. with him but you know he he said if you go back to college I'll finish high school and go to college so I now I'm you know in college Mm -hmm. fine as I am not that I needed to be there (laughs) but it worked and we had it we had a system so I went he went and he agreed that he would graduate and go to college and I would do the same thing with him so I appreciate that from him because I did Mm -hmm. you know get my associates that way okay in marketing um, and so he's with Jaden, living with her. Before you know it, they're pregnant, and they're turning into complete losers. But How I had told he her he's eighteen. He dropped okay. out of, when he dropped out of college. But I had told her, and she respected it. And she, her grades went from a two point oh to a three point six because now she's trying to get to Fayetteville. Okay. Okay. So she's gonna go to college with him. That was the plan. We had a plan. She can't became part of the plan. I helped her with her role in the plan. Okay. Everybody appreciated it, but now I don't. I shouldn't see my grandkids. 
who's going to give them the plan? She don't even have a relationship with her dad's side of the family. So you t- that tells you where this is going. Y'all okay. finna do to me the same thing y'all did to her. Okay. Her mom wants the grandkids to herself. And I'm going to say that. I know why you took her out of my son's house because me and Javon were establishing a relationship. We're living together. Mm-hmm. And I, she there was a problem. Jaden even told me her mom had a problem with it. Okay. So our relationship became stronger. And obviously there was a problem with that, and that's how she left. Was Jaden ever, and we're talking about Blueface's uh, child's kid's mother, of course, um, was she ever disrespectful to you when never, she was younger? Never, ever once never. in life. Okay. It, right. She's not the person that I would have chose for him. But when they turned 15 and I, you know, st- start seeing that he was getting a little distracted from football and the things that was part of our plan, I started to kind of like, well, she needs to come on this day and not this day to, you know, to fo- for him to focus a little bit more. And um, he told me out of his own mouth, I'm going to be with her and I'm going to marry her. And if you don't like it, say something now. Oh. So he's always kind of put women before everything. I mean, I don't know where that came from, but I, I mean, he had a few girlfriends before that and he never had that temperature for them. Yeah, but he strikes me as the type to get lost when in love. Com- in love. No. Like, you could, no, that's not No, you so? I, on, the only person, and I'm going to say this just because I'm so transparent and honest and I'm okay. his mother. The only person that I've ever seen him with that look in his eyes, like he adored them. He did have that look for Jaden when they first got together. Mm-hmm. I will admit. But that Jiggy girl, okay, he had a different look. And I could see they had a different relationship. And when he referred to her like, oh, she reminds me of Janice, my sister Callie. Okay. Um, I was like, oh, yeah, she's probably about to take over. Okay. And I could see her energy and, you know, just her, the way about her. I, I liked her, too, um, even though it was a weird situation mm-hmm. um, where we had gotten that situation probably four years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's safe to say that you, you didn't support his rap career. I didn't at first. Um, but like I said, once I sent him out there and I saw he was serious and adamant, he had already dropped out of college, I would rather him pursue rapping than work at Walmart. Okay. And I mean, he was working at like um, Office Max or something like that. So, you know, when he said, okay, I have another dream, that's okay. I'm okay. totally cool with that. You're young. It's, it's, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed okay. to figure out which direction. And it was going back to the camera, which is where they were raised. Okay. You know, he booked his first national commercial at five. Okay. So this is definitely up his alley. Yeah. So definitely. football was kind of. Do you feel like football was your dream? Football was definitely his dream first because I didn't want him to play football anymore because he had that knee injury when he was in seventh grade. Okay. And it was so like the, so the Hollywood the going 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 Hollywood was was your dream. Yeah. Okay. It was definitely why I moved from Ohio to California when I was eighteen. My dad had made an agreement like if you graduate, I'm giving y'all all the tea that's in my series. <laughs> If you graduate high school, then you can go to California and, you know, do something with the cameras. My grandfather always told me when I when he when I had this mole yeah. on my face, he used to yeah. be like, you have that mole like um, what's her name? Marilyn Monroe. You're yeah. going to be a star. Yeah. So that was always in the back of my head, too. You plant seeds and, you know, okay. eventually. So I guess from him. OK, obviously he's big. His to me, you know, I didn't really hear about him until Tatiana. Right. And I thought it was a rather interesting song because he wasn't rapping on beat. And then when I saw what Google wrote about him being an offbeat rapper that became famous for rapping offbeat, I was just like, hmm, well, maybe that's probably why, you know, I took it that way. Um, You like his music? You always like this music? Um, I like that song. I thought it was I thought it was interesting. I mean. And then when Cardi got on it, I was like, <laughs> I even like it even more now. You know, it was, it was, you know how we feel. It was very interesting. Okay. However, my father is big on what we went through with the mm-hmm. gang stuff. So it was a big controversy in, you know, my family that you would betray us like this. And and see, that's the thing, too, because, I, you know, I wanted to wait to ask you about that. Because, like, I, I asked your daughter, I said, w- was the gang lifestyle something that was big in your family because I know in LA 
you know, the families, the whole family is is a part of the the gang and in the Girl, lifestyle. I ain't never shot a gun in my life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I when they told me that they had that he had one when he was sixteen and he went to jail, I was just like, where would he get it from? Your blue face. No, my older son. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I after on after that, I was like, I didn't okay. let my younger son out of my sight. Okay. So. Okay. After that, I was. So, I, I guess what I'm saying, because obviously, you know, the Tatiana song was, you know, Blood and and Crip. Was it really? I, you know, Blueface, he's, he's. I don't think that had anything to do with gangs, did it? It didn't, but she wore her set. I know. And he wore his set. You see how the devil worked. And it's like, okay, that's. It's but kinda, I, but it's I do kinda... know in LA, they, 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 you know, the gangs do mix. Some of them are friends. I even be. thought, I was like, wow. Maybe he's going to bridge the gap. Because I know, like, I, I dream things and I see things. Yeah. So I kind of know. We all okay. knew he something was going to happen with him. Okay. Like, we put the ball in his hand. Like, look, okay. this is what happened. Because he was booking all the commercials, and I'm out here auditioning, pounding the pavement. You know, all I'm getting is to shake the yeah. booty and, you know, the this and the that. So once he started auditioning and booked his first job, I was like, okay, boom. You get us through the door. I'm coming in right behind you. Okay. That's the plan. Okay. You know, use your cute little face. I'm meeting directors every time he works, and you know they're calling me for commercials now after him. Okay. So this has been the plan. Okay, you got the keys to the gate, obviously. Okay. okay. You go in. Here, let, let's get that mic in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> you can move it back a little bit because I just don't want you talking on top okay. of it. So he's um okay. So he's successful with Tatiana, and um so he's through the door. He's through the door. Okay, so do you approach Right before, him? the year before, Andre comes home. Now okay. remember, this was the plan. Get the bag so that we can make sure that he's set so that he don't have to deal with what he's dealing with right now. Okay. You know, it's, it's, what you're it's really hard. I've taken him to every single place to get a job because I refuse to believe that our system is that broken. Okay. I refuse. I, would, I don't give no excuses in my house. Okay. Oh, you you don't you throwing interceptions? I was that mom on the field, like you yo you giving other team points? What are we mm-hmm. doing? Like I would be, and he would literally do this in the middle, like before he get ready to hike the ball, like yeah. That's how serious I was. I stayed in his head. You're not moving your feet. That's why you're not throwing the ball right. Okay. Next 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 pass, he's moving his feet. He's throwing the ball. It's crisp. We good. All right, there we go. Okay. So when Andre gets home, uh, your son, it's a year before Tatiana gets big and puts. It really kind of opens up a lot of doors for Blueface, exactly. right? Um, how did, I guess, was Andre, you know, pretty excited at your brother? I mean, that his brother Oh, was, was he excited? He was getting, like, all the love in the jail. Like, when he left, it wasn't like, you know, when you normally leave jail, yeah. they're, like, trying to, like, get you to stay. Because <laughs> <laughs> Like, when you get out, like, yo, can you tell him I said what's up? Like, yeah. he's telling me, like, he got onto the fire camp. Okay. Like what was on a waiting list, you know, I'm gonna call it God's favor. Not what, the Tatiana's. fire camp, what to be a firefighter. Yeah. What? So fire camp helps you get out sooner. Um, okay. and then in he, prison. Yeah. Okay. Um, but right before he got out, he was so gung ho to get onto the fire department. And I appreciate that. Shout out to, you know, them. They don't know if they, ha- know if they have it anymore to okay. the state of California, but that was a good program, a good incentive for him to fight, to get out instead of fear to get out. Okay. Because, you know, that has its own trauma in itself. Like, what do I do when I get out? You know, it helps to know, like, Blueface is my brother. I don't have to do much, you know? Yeah. I'm going to flash the card. Okay. So Andre is out. Um, Was, uh, I guess, what I'm trying to get to is the breakdown. You know what I'm saying? The major breakdown. Because it sounds like, you know... You you had it sounds like you you as a mom because of course they're kids. You have one way you want them to go. They chose another way. However, you jump on board and say, Okay, but if you go this way, this is what we're going to do. Did you feel like he kind of pushed you to the side a little as he got more famous? Jonathan Blueface? I feel like um his manager um definitely let him know like or put him in a box or created a narrative for him that didn't involve like your mama no more which was cool like he has to grow up and be a man okay um how did that make you feel though um I was a, I was like okay let me I play chess 
everybody in my house plays okay. chess. I was like, let me figure out how to be a part of it through the manager then. Same thing with the coaches. They're not going to let me on the field. Okay. But if I talk to them and I have a relationship with them and I see something that's going on, they usually listen to me. Okay. And it works. And then they're like, okay, mom should be on board. So you got So in. I tried to take that same route with him and that worked. Okay. And so you, you were... Uh, you were supported, like you were able to kind of still co-manage him alongside WAC while he was rising in fame. Exactly. Okay. How did how did you feel about the gang lifestyle being portrayed in his music? I felt very betrayed. Um, same as my father. Um, Why? Just because it took thirteen years from my life with my older son. Okay. So, and then I also often question, like, well, is this paying it back? Like, and then when he was with Game, um, I felt like maybe, okay, I'm always, I'm always hopeful. Like, mm-hmm. okay, I never know where God is taking this thing. I just know it's way over here that we got to go. And we might have to be like Paul on that road to Damascus to get there. And I have to stay. They think I'm not a mom, but, you yeah. know, I'll send my text messages. This is how I feel about it. And I do let them make their decisions. Before they make their decisions, they definitely heard how I felt about did it. Did you try to discourage him from I taking definitely on this did. Game? That's why I sent him to get another offer, because once I looked up who WAC was and saw that, ooh, yeah, this is not a good look at all. Okay. You know. Okay. Where it could go, like, and then. Why did you think it wasn't a good look with WAC now? I mean, because he has some type of affiliation. I don't know if he still does or whatever, but that's where he came from. Okay. You know what I mean? It wasn't like signing to Barry Gordy, if that makes sense. Your son, so Jonathan wasn't, and I got to say Jonathan Blueface, just so so they won't, you know, get confused because you do, we do talk about Andre, which is his older brother. Mm -hmm. And so then Jonathan, um, and I know Andre kind of went down, you know, started hanging with the wrong people. And that's how he ended up, you know, doing 13 years. You know what I'm saying? In prison, that was, I'm sure that was gang-related stuff. Was Jonathan at the time, even though he was young, but, I mean, was he introduced to the gang lifestyle through his older brother, or was it something that came when the music came? Oh, no, it was definitely there before the music. Okay. It was just me. While he was If it wasn't, house. like, me <clears throat> making sure, like, oh, yeah, you got football practice. Nope, we got another coaching session. You know what I mean? If it wasn't me keeping him busy, fundamentally he definitely would have hung out more with his his peers like okay. they meet these kids in like seventh eighth grade you know and in they, jonathan's case first grade okay some of these people that he with or that he started with he's been with since child since elementary okay so okay. those those are your friends and you know regardless of which route they go i, I believe you somewhat support them we've all been through that you know yeah. Um, for the most part, I, I, the ones that he hangs out with, I see them and they're the, the better quality. I don't know if there's a better quality. I, I shouldn't say that. But, you know, there's some kids that just don't push the limit that far. But you are where you're from. So you definitely do not agree. Absolutely not. Okay. With the gang lifestyle. Okay. And so that's you'll, you'll never see me play one of those songs or promote that. He knows okay. how I feel about it. In fact, Is that I the told him why you don't really support his music. I mean, of course, you are a 50-year-old woman. Yeah, it's just not my thing either. But, I mean, and, you know, I I respect and love my dad with all my heart. Yeah. Uh, Just just a little bit less than God. You know what I'm saying? Like, Okay. So I know how my dad feels. So it's like, yeah, I can't rock with you because I'm not losing my dad for you. Okay. You know what I mean? Do you feel that Jonathan Blueface kind of – because, you know, when you you get your opinions from your parents, it hits harder. Do you feel that – He's kind of angry that you don't support the type of music or the lifestyle he portrays in the music, and that's what causes him to be so resentful towards you a little bit. I th- I definitely think that could be one of the definitely could be a problem in our relationship for sure. Okay, because now, I'm always talking down on it. You know, like Callie says, like Mom, it's like you know, you can't do it now. You should have did it. When he was little. And I'm like, I, th- I thought I did. I thought I made myself very clear. Like, these are the people you don't want to rock with because nobody sent your brother a package. No, I had to pretend I was a whole man on the phone okay. for your brother to get people to write him. Remember that? Okay. Like, why would you? They're not going to be there for you. So so now now we're getting we're getting to the meat of it because that's that's another thing. It's like 
there's so many different um, aspects of what we see on social media. And then yet you have this, 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 this artist who is your son and you are affiliated and you guys are fighting on social media. You're fighting with his girlfriends. Your, your daughter is fighting on your behalf because of the disrespect. And so I just kind of wanted to kind of see where he would think, even though it's not an that excuse. I, that I'm against him. Yeah. So like maybe that's the reason why he, he doesn't, um, I think he's going to feel that way about anybody that's not going to go with his program. Okay. Like his motto is like, if you haven't made a million dollars, you can't talk to me about money. You can't talk to me about life. Everything. I do believe that, you know, you can't, the broke can't educate the, you know, just just because we haven't made a million dollars doesn't mean that we can't inspire somebody else to. I ain't going to say made a million dollars. Look at you. you But if you can't, financially stabilize yourself you can't give me tips on money management Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like a a, you know a financial advisor could probably but my financial advisor i'm gonna want to know that my financial advisor is doing good financially not just oh i came out of college and i'm a financial advisor you understand what i'm saying so like it's who i take advice from not to say like you're his mother the moral aspect is there. So you, you're you're not in the same playing field. So you trying to tell him how to manage money comes from a motherly perspective, not a financial advise advisement expect perspective. Like you're his mom, you gave him mm-hmm. you gave him life, you supported him. You understand what I'm saying? So that's there's completely two different two different um So to answer your question, I think we definitely had a much better relationship before all of that, for sure. I okay. could tell him that the stars were blue, turn left, and he would turn left on a dime, literally. But did, when you he did was that, that one kid that I had. Okay. We went to church every Sunday, okay. all the way up until he went to college. Every Sunday, like clockwork. And he he told his brother and her sister, "You're not rich because you didn't listen to mommy." Okay. So you definitely instilled the foundation in him. And that's what I'm saying. That's a different type of support. So him saying he's not listening to you because you haven't made a million dollars. No, you, you gave him the, the discipline, the resilience and all that to, to use the same tactics. It's like, you know, we hear about it. It's cliche all the time. You know, we see a dope deal on the streets. It's like, oh, my God, if you would just put this into selling the same chicken fried rice that these Chinese people are selling or opening up these beauty supply stores, stop selling dope in our neighborhoods and take over these damn businesses that are being that, that are literally ravaging our communities. We would be much richer. But instead, you're going to jail for the shit. Meanwhile, they're killing us with this damn rice in these poor quality grocery stores. You know what I'm saying? That our black men. Um, should be running instead of running jails and 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 running farms and shit in jails. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? So like, I I just kind of wanted to make that that clear, you know, for you and the viewers. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's two different two different lifestyles. So as a mom, I think we all can agree with you that no one agrees with this lifestyle and the type of music. That he's making you as you, what type of mother would you be if you were to say I support it? And that's hard. And that's what caused, and I feel that's what caused the breakdown between you and your son, because he wants to hear from you that you support him. But it's like, but how do you go against your moral ground? You wouldn't be his mother when he, he knows. And when he first started, he tried to give me money and buy me gifts and do all these things. If you remember when he first blessed me with a uh-huh. gift that I showed online, uh-huh. it was when he told me he got that um, modeling contract from Fashion Nova. Oh. I've been posting my kids every single thing they do. SAT scores. You name it. I'm posting it. Like, my friends are like, we know we support you. Like, we've watched you groom these kids since they were five. You post them literally every week. My dad, my mom says, mm-hmm, that's what you get. Remember, you, you try to keep those kids on pedestals. They're so tall. They're so beautiful. They're better than everybody else. I don't remember putting it like that, but, I mean, I definitely had that type of confidence about them. Okay. But I'm pretty sure she exaggerated, but that's what she's telling me is coming back on me. 
You okay. put those kids before anything and everyone, and you try to make them, you know, so much more than what they really are, and that's what's coming back to haunt you. Well, I mean, you did what your mother didn't do for your kids. For so, I mean, like, she contributed to so that. Definitely so definitely probably you went know, I'm a sorry, lot Mom. overboard. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mom. But if that's you, why. <laughs> if you watch this interview, because we, we tend to do or give our kids what we did not get. Exactly. So it was an extreme version, and I'm sure your mom is talking about the extreme version, but she definitely contributed to that. So she can't blame you for that. Oh, you know? no. She takes full responsibility. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, that's good. she definitely is like, oh. I mean, her friends are calling her like, look at your kids in the public. <laughs> and I'm telling her like, mom, I promise you when this pass is over, mm-hmm. we on our way to the bag. Yeah. Jonathan dropped the keys and gave them to the, and it reminds me, I would tell Callie all the time, you remember that? Yeah. Um, the wine got me talking a little too much. It's all good. But you remember that, uh, what's it called? That that ship that crashed in the ocean. Titanic. Titanic. Yeah. You remember when the guy is like, I put the um, the, the, the diamond mm-hmm. in the pocket of the jacket, and then he gave it to the girl, mm-hmm. and now he doesn't have it anymore? Yeah. I said, that reminds me of what John is doing with Krishan right now. Okay. That's not the plan. Yes, we're here to help everybody. But we our plan was like the Wayans, yeah. the Jacksons. Like I, I feel that he's taken on this, um, Krishan, is because one, yes, he love he obviously loves her. Um two, it's it's kind of easier to put into someone else than it is yourself. And now that you guys are not as close as you were, he doesn't have anyone putting that into so basically he's just doing what he knows to do he's just doing what he can right now to to make ends meet yeah because she she's she's popping right now right and it's based off of the recklessness that's that's going on and so um because i I know music isn't selling um he's probably doing shows um he's he's getting gigs here and there when you go to celebrity boxing so early they only take and and I'm not calling your son a reject. That's not what I'm saying. But they only take the ones with the the failing careers when you go to celebrity boxing. So that's kind of a, oh, you're not making money over here. Let's go do the boxing. Now, of course, Logan Paul and his brother Jake Paul made it kind of cool, but they were they're they're white privilege. So it's different. Mm-hmm. But when they throw black people in the celebrity boxing ring, it's because they don't have much going on. So we can give them this this check to, you know, to keep them afloat because they're going to do it because they don't have I anything don't, else I think he on. definitely would do it for the money for sure. But, I, you know, there's Jonathan's um, dream job was boxing. Okay. So it's right just now, the way it's this coming, is, though. It's not coming and it as could, it is. And it could be, you know, just his reroute into where he probably, you know, his father, when he named him, I, I, I wanted to name him a junior. Okay. And his father was like, no, nah, I need something like hood in the middle. So if he goes to be a boxer, and this is like literally Jonathan like. Jonathan Porter is not in, th- is not hood. It's let, not let me tell you what he did with Jonathan Porter. What did he do? Jonathan Jamal Porter. Okay. I was like, whatever, name him whatever. Because <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. if you got a dream and you finna, you know, plant a seed, let's do it. Whatever, right. you know, maybe right. he sees something I don't see. So I feel like this is definitely something, a place where he's going, where he probably is just really excited about it. Okay. I mean, however, we can take it like that. Yeah. Yeah, But you know, they, they do take the, you know, when black China had to go box, it was because she had to get back one of her cars, you know, and all of a sudden she's doing a campaign for OnlyFans saying she made 20 million a month. That's, that's not true. (laughs) However, I just wanted to point that out. So, I mean, but in this, in this lifestyle, we see like the perks of, you know, doing anything. So one thing leads to another. And the next thing you know, you're doing a, you know, interview with Tasha K. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I let people think that, you know, I'm this out of control mom and I don't, you know, I'm not there for my kids and, you know, I don't have no time. I want them to be gang members and just get out here and make money. And if that's what they choose to believe, so be it. Well, I'm glad you clarified. And I know it's hard for you to say it during this interview that you do not support Absolutely not. The music, it, the, his choice of music, because no. I'm sure if he did another choice of music, if he went Kanye, Kendrick Lamar, Jay Z, it would be a lot different. When he He'll, gets to Kanye, he knows yeah. this already. If I show you my text message yeah. of just um, prophecy, 
you will be blown away. Okay. Literally in 2018, I supported Kanye like nobody, no, like I knew him. I literally prayed over Kanye one night and I talk in tongues when I pray and I get real heated and I had just started mm-hmm. dating my husband. So I didn't want him to know where the Lord was leading me. I'm in another room and you know, the Holy Spirit said, pray for Kanye. This was when everybody was like, blue face is coming in and Kanye's going insane. This is what the people thought. Okay. You know, when you go for Christ, you appear to go insane. Okay. So I literally started praying. I'm praying for Jonathan because I'm like, oh, God, there's crips and bloods. And I got the crip rag in my Bible. And I'm just like, Lord, protect this child. Protect all of my children. What are we doing? I go, I'm praying for Jonathan, Holy Spirit. Pray for Kanye. I'm praying for Kanye, giving up the ghost, like in my hiding spot, trying Mm -hmm. to give it up. And lo and behold, I go to bed, lay down, and turn on the TV, and my son is in handcuffs. Mm. I, I lost my whole, I couldn't say a word. I couldn't talk to him. I just text my aunt and said, I can't pray right now because I'm too angry. But can you pray for John? Now, what was he arrested for this time? He was arrested for a gun charge or something going oh, wow. on. Okay. But what happened was the Holy Spirit was telling me to pray. And it was already taken care of. Somebody had called and said somebody was about to rob him. So the police just showed up and he ended up in a situation. Okay. Okay. After I got done praying for Kanye, I told John, I said, I don't know what happens, but when you get to Kanye, you'll finally find yourself and be delivered. Mm-hmm. I've literally like left Kanye messages that he don't even know about. So that when the meetup meets up, I can say, I tried to tell you this. So yeah. when when I saw him with Kanye recently, I was like, oh, my God, he's getting so close. Yeah, I mean, and I guess. Because sometimes it just takes a bigger brother uh-huh. that's going your route to tell you it's okay to be cool without representing that brand. So does his lifestyle scare you? Scare me? I don't. <laughs> that you're going to get a call one day. No, God promised me that would never happen. Okay. So literally, so I, I rest in that and I pray about it. I did my bid with my older son. Jonathan knows right from wrong. I baptized all of them at 12, just like I was baptized at 12. Mm-hmm. And I believe that he's covered in the blood. I believe that he will find his direction and he will, like the boy in the Bible, come home and we will celebrate. Okay. And I, I just believe that. I just literally have to wait for him to get out of his car, Lissa, at in the 90s. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when so you being, when you live so a crazy life like that. Okay. So yeah. basically just um following in your footsteps. Okay. He was a much better kid. That's why I'm like, where are we? Why are we here? Yeah. Let's talk about cuz I think we didn't know it was a problem at the household or with the family until you uh I don't know if it was you or your daughter that went live and when he put you guys out of the house. Now you weren't that there were people were under the impression that you were living in the house, but your daughter, she, she came and she clarified everything. She said that you guys were not living in the house Mm -hmm. that she came down there. She was supposed to go to another one of his places and you guys were there for a few weeks and you came in, um, to visit as well. And so I I transported her. So I didn't want her to, I wanted her to be able to take all my grandson's toys or whatever he wanted to bring. And we, we're like, we've been driving. Like I said, we go from prison to prison or a football game to basketball game in the car. Okay. Even if it's two days, it was nothing out of normal normal for you to be at, at your, your son's house. Right now. He, obviously, because uh, Callie said that he did not have Jaden and, and the other girl, Lollipop, I just figured out her name, um, living at the house because obviously he knew that you would not be accepting to him living that way. Basically yeah, having two not, women, yeah. one is his child's there? mother and his grand, and the grandson with another. Yeah, no. So he got irritated that you guys were there and he could not live the way that he had been living so um his him, dream fantasy came true at the wrong time that's literally what happened okay so I his mean, I dream think fantasy <laughs> listen to me mm-hmm. came true like what at the wrong time okay while we were there right. and do you know what he told me on the low when i didn't um when after it all went down okay and I told him, you know, after I reprimanded him, told him this, is, oh, this is blasphemy. You got your child in here and you got these two women in here. This is horrible. I'm going on and on. He said, my daddy told me you did it with, with, with another girl, with him. Oh. 
I said, mm, really? <laughs> this after we made up, though. Yeah. And that's what really, like, I, oh, God, you really got to go pray about everything that you go through with your kids because some of it comes from you, but a lot of it be like, ooh, okay. you picked that up on your own. So he's saying that dad told him that he had two women. You and Is that true? And another woman? Mm-hmm. Y'all was living together? No, no, no. They weren't living together. That well, yeah, they did after you know we went through that. Um, but that was when but I was you there. Didn't, the same, the same situation that your son is in, like with well, he's not in that situation now because Krishan obviously has some boundaries. <laughs> I got to give her that. <laughs> However, um, him with Jaden, Alexis, his baby mother, and Lollipop, and the kids there, you lived. With, with we didn't live, father. but we had a person come in and stay with us for a couple weeks. Does he remember that? What? He told me that to my face. Like, you did it with my dad. Like, who are you to tell me? And I just, I couldn't believe his dad had told him such a thing. Oh, shit. Okay. You know, why would you put this in his head to even make him want to be the king that you are? You know, make you feel like you're some macho guy, you know? Yeah. Like, this is something that's on his bucket list, I'm sure. Okay. So... Uh, oh, whew, that's yeah. a lot. So, um, and what did so you didn't respond? Obviously, you didn't respond to him when he uh, he said that to you. I was I lost all my tongue that day. I just okay. couldn't believe his dad. So that told that me was that. A, that was ultimately the breakdown. She pouring that why wine. He, she gonna get to yeah, the bottom of this. Yeah, she I gonna mean, get to the bottom of this shit. No, that's that's not a good host of me. I mean, so obviously he that's what led to him asking. Well, not asking. Throwing your stuff out of the house to leave is because you guys had got into it about that. It was another disagreement of his lifestyle. He didn't throw any of my things out. He threw my daughter's um, suitcase out. Okay. Um, but it, didn't he drag you out the house or something? I thought, or was he dragging her? He was, yeah, her and, well, did she tell you? Her and him fought growing up. Like, yeah, so. She told me that, too, when she saw him and Krishan. She was like, you know, Mom, I don't think I should have fought John as much growing up. Maybe that's what's making him crazy because <laughs> she used to give it to him. And okay. you, she became the babysitter that Andre was, you know, okay, the protector. So, like, you So know, you feel like because they fought as brother and sister, he didn't learn boundaries with with. Hitting a, hitting a woman back. Like, my okay. sister hit me, I'm hitting her back. Like, okay. she will kill me if I don't hit her back. Like, you know, and I would be at work. Okay. So, you uh, know. I mean, I could, I could see that, you know, uh, but it's it's not an excuse because, I mean, these, these, these drugs will put him in jail. They so, will, but yeah. like I tell him, you, one wrong hook from Krishan, I, I done made somebody deaf to this day. One wrong hook and, you, you know, you better bob and weave or do what you can do to get out of there. But if it gets too tough... Don't let nobody hit you, okay. you know, no matter if it's a woman or a man. Because these standards that we have today, women are men and men are women. Okay. We're going to treat them with what, you know, <laughs> you got. Am I lying? No, like, I they mean, want every, they, I ain't never heard we, nobody put it like we that want all, We want all the, you know, we yeah. want to give them all this, you know, respect as who, you know, different okay. people, how they come. If you're a woman that comes like a man, including myself, like, I might hurt you if I hit you. Okay. Don't, you know, well, you know well, and, and it, it and did appear like he tried to use all of his, you know, until he took that one to the chin and it was like, you know, he has blackout issues too. He's a boxer. He's an ex football player. You know, most of his friends that have played football at the level that he played, they got a little air in there so like from CTC. them hits. Yeah. So you think your son got a little well, bit of Well, for the sure. CTC? I tell him all the time. His dad tells him like, son, you got to get that checked and just make sure you know, that you're straight because he has a lot of friends that are, you know, dealing with, you know, anxiety and problems just like that. Like you hit them and they're just like, you know, it's a, it's a situation. Okay. Well, I mean, that's, that's good. That's a lot to know. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, that's a lot it, of hits from six of, years old until college. That's yeah. a lot of hits. And yeah. you don't really know, like I would definitely not have let him, my grandson now will not play football. Okay. Okay. Absolutely not. He will not play football. Okay. I didn't know it was that serious until I talked to another mother on his team to mm. find out, you know, that's what that response is, that, you know, that quick response is from that. Even if dealing yeah. with us could be some type of CT, you know? Okay. So you guys made, uh, obviously you guys made up after the incident of when, you know, it was on social media that he had put y'all out of his house and it was due to you disagreeing. And, and I don't blame you. Like, you come home and you, you see... 
Even though, like... Now, mind you, this woman, we was prepared, you know, if she walked up on Jaden in the streets, we was going to do her. With no questions asked. Oh, Jayden, so the woman, the third yes, woman that's in the Jayden house. Yes, had already told us, this lady is the enemy. She's about to whoop on me, try to whoop on me, do some stuff to me. And Johnny's, you know, Callie is like, no, she's not. Yeah. You know, so, Jayden I like, mean, Jayden ain't that. scared. She gonna do what she gotta do. But, at, you know, she's like, she's taller than me. She's a big girl, you know. So we already, before we get there, we're already prepared that she's the enemy. And so now you, you just walk in the house with her and Jaden, and they laugh and go lucky. Like, how do we turn the temperature down that fast? Just because okay, you, so guys... you were under the impression that the baby mother was an enemy to this girl that he had been sleeping with, and now all of a sudden they one big happy family. You and Callie are there to visit. Y'all definitely are under the impression that she's the enemy, and then you on top of the mother, you don't approve of the lifestyle because exactly. even though like. You know, you did what you did when you were younger. You didn't want that for your son. No, okay. absolutely. I definitely didn't want it for my grandson or okay. or for Jaden. I love Jaden, you know, like a daughter. Okay. When I, it wasn't until I started to realize that the money changed her in our relationship that I said I don't have no more loyalty to you. Okay, you because know what you, I'm saying. You, I mean, this is obviously a younger a girl that you had known since she was yes. 13, 14 years you old. You pulling into the, you buying Christmas gifts to my grandson and then he don't ever get them. Like John is giving her the money to buy our gifts. That's cool. My husband gives me the money to buy the family gifts. So I'm going to do what I got to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to buy this person, this and that person, that. Right. All of a sudden, Callie's supposed to get a gift. She don't ever get a gift. Because she keeps the money. Well, my son's like, well, I, told, I gave Jaden the money to get the gifts. And we like, okay, we don't never tell him nothing that's going on. So while the people be thinking we the whole problem and there's a whole problem, we've swallowed so much stuff, so much stuff that you guys couldn't even begin to imagine. Like what? I mean, just like Christmas Day, you know, they're supposed to get these motorcycles that you saw Blue Sun post. Mm-hmm. My grandson is there and, you know, we're excited for him to get his too. There's only one motorcycle. Now, Callie would have bought the motorcycle and if not, I would have got it for her. I would have told my husband, yeah, run that because they playing games with my grandson. We're going to make sure they all got what they need. Okay. I don't care if Blueface got this kind of money. My husband got money too. He retired okay. from two different places and um, 100% PTSD. So, you know, okay. we're going to sleep on 10000 no matter what. Okay. Every month. As okay. long as we wake up. Okay. So the motorcycle wasn't there for my other grandson. And so now he's watching on Christmas. He didn't even, you know, really do Christmas at his house because the big gift that Blue was buying them, these motorcycles, you know, $1,000 motorcycles or whatever, we, sh- you know, excited for them to open and ride them together. There's only one motorcycle. Okay. The motorcycle is somewhere. It didn't come, whatever. So just J- Javon's motorcycle is there. So Christmas is kind of ruined for Callie. It's kind of ruined for her son because he's just watching with this little gun, you know, whatever the little toys that he got. And it wasn't what John wanted. And I know John felt like. So it, So basically, I guess to sum it up, it's just these little things that she does. Yes. That you don't run back in your petty about to your son. So to keep, I guess, the the. You know what I'm saying? The temperature. Well, she down got between... the motorcycle later, and then she gave Javon a second one, and never gave it to Carter. Okay, so I, I kind of get what you're saying here. Like she's not, you know, holding yeah. up her end of the bargain. She's not doing what her son is telling her to do. Yeah, and she's causing obviously problems amongst the family, and you know, ultimately that's what led to you know the breakdown. Now, I, I didn't like that she didn't kind of help. You know that situation, like when he's putting you out of the house, she didn't say anything. Yes, that could you was, imagine? That, I know that was my if thing. If my husband put his but sister you, out because we fixing to do something, with, oh you, no, because I need them tomorrow. If this girl act up, <laughs> this my backup over here. Yeah, my mama you, not finna come help me with this girl. Yeah, this my backup over but here. I mean, obviously, they had already had an agreement going, and so that you weren't privy to, which was that he was going to be in a relationship with both of these women, and so uh, whether you approved of it or not, and. So so um, let's move on to the fight with Krishan because, I mean, all we know is what you guys have, you know, a piece of her story, a piece of your story. Callie says that you you FaceTimed her. You got a black eye. You, you're bleeding. You know what I'm saying? And that's what led up to her going over to your son's house to fight everybody. And it was it was very graphic for her to tell about you know, concerning your son stumping on her stomach and that's what made her pee on herself. And then we see video online of your daughter literally getting, you know, it appears to be beat up 
but she's obviously got pee on her back, and some people are saying that it's poop. And, you know, I, for me, I wouldn't even be able to sit up and, and, and talk after that because I would be humiliated. And it was I could tell that it bothered her a lot to talk about that, but, like, that's what ultimately led up to that fight. What Now, Krishan Rock is in the picture. Jaden is somewhat out of the picture. Okay? I don't think she'll ever be out of the picture. Okay. Well, I mean, Krishan Rock is obviously now living yeah. at the house, and they're close. She's making the money. She's right making the money. Your daughter said that, too. Um, and I think everybody kind of sees that for what it is. She's the money maker right now while he's not. I mean, we, we know you. she's not making no mm. money yet, but. That's where it's going. Okay. Yeah. I mean, well, she's getting booked and busy and stuff. And so, mm -hmm. you know, he's managing her and things like that. But what was the breakdown? Because even before we, they have always kind of fought and broken up and, and gotten back together. I remember your daughter saying that, you know, she even went over to fight Krishan, you know, for Jaden, you know, because, you know, Krishan was getting pretty close to your son, Jonathan, but for her to put hands on you, what happened that day besides the you throwing, what led up to I you throwing when, bottles at Krishan? I think when my son said, oh, I was arguing with him, telling him that he's got two dogs there already. Okay. Jaden's gone. So now I'm cleaning the house and obviously my husband is there because we're okay. running his restaurant. Okay. When he asked us to come run the restaurant, I said no. Okay. He said, you gave my brother 13 years driving back and forth with him and going doing all this stuff for him for prison. You can't help me, so now I'm obligated. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of doing my show, and I'm excited. And, you know, my husband just retired. We just moved to Las Vegas. I pick up, rent out the house, move with him, me and my husband, because we had a restaurant in Ohio. So he, he knew we knew everything. Okay. Um, so we get it going for him. We're working for him. Him and Jaden are going back and forth, you know, because of the Krishan stuff. Jaden is taking out everything on me. Everything. So I come home and it's a problem about this or a problem about that. And so I'm you guys were all living together? Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was good until, you know, he started, you know, I guess giving a little bit too much attention to Krishan. Um, once Jaden got pregnant, she was like, everybody can go now because I'm getting this second child support check and I'm good. So it was okay. just like, I don't, she didn't really want to deal with nobody after that. Okay. So she leaves the house. They had their situation. Now, you know, we're there with him and you know, he's the, we got these two dogs for him. He says he didn't want them. I got the dogs because you need dogs in your house when them other dogs try to come in, okay. you know, and I've had dogs. So I kind of know how to get the dogs ready to bite at will. So I'm training the dogs, going through all this motion. My husband the whole time is like, when are we leaving? Getting upset with me. And I'm like, well, because, we, you know, we had the home invasion and I couldn't leave after that. I was like, there's absolutely no way I could leave right now. Like okay. if somebody comes in this house, I need you here, you know, to help my son. Like we cannot leave him here. Okay. So we stayed, you know, he, even though he has people there and has everything under control, um, he has the two dogs. He brings Rock in and we're just like, oh God. So Rock is not leaving. Jaden left. Right. And I asked him, I'm like, in. okay, so are you sure this is what we're doing? Like, we're not doing Jaden? Because whatever he decides to do, I'm his mom. I'm not Jaden's mom at the end of the day. Okay. If you change your mind, if I change my mind tomorrow and I decide I'm not doing my husband, they got to go where I go. Okay. We moving over here. This is what I it is. It. I get so it. So I, I gave him that same respect. Like, if the loyalty is not there with her and we're moving it over here, she not feeling me anyway, and she's not really the person that I would have had for you in the first place. If you switched up the script, all right, tell me the new script. I'm going along with you. I, Krishan moves in. Oh, she's a she's literally just takes over my heart with you know all of this. Oh, I want to do this for my mom, and you know, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is what he needs to see. Like you know, this is going to be a lot. She has a lot of family members that she's claiming that she's going to provide for. Mm -hmm. She's got big plans and big dreams. This is what he needs. So you you took you guys connected At, right off the rip. So where I'm driving her around to her little appointments and her locations, and then this lady comes into the restaurant and she's there and she's all over the place, and I'm just like woosa. And the lady goes, she prophesies and says. She's your responsibility. And I wanted to, th I even got into it with the lady because I got, immediately got mad. Like, look, lady, I'm off duty. I'm a Christian, but I'm not getting ready to take on the world and definitely not getting ready to take on this. I'm going to do what I got to do. And she was talking about Krishan. She was talking about Krishan. Okay. 
And She's so, your responsibility. This is what God planned for you. And she hadn't met that girl at all, just saw her jumping around doing what she does. Okay. So I'm like, okay, I'll do what I can. I'm taking her here. I, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I'm taking her to this this bad girl thing. Maybe, maybe this is what the lady was talking about. Let me make sure this contract is right. Let me make sure this money is right. I'm used to signing contracts for the kids. This right. is what I do. Negotiate, la, la, la. She said the people offered her this. When we get there, that's what it better be. It wasn't even close. Okay. So you were put in charge to negotiate on Krishan's behalf. because By was, her and my son. Okay. Because I believe Natalie, the chin, got online and said that you tried to steal her money or something like that or try to route right. the money to Can your Can you believe account. that? Yeah. But she's living, you know, obviously this is a... She's living with me. What am I going to do with $20,000? Hide it from her all day and be like, oh, yeah, I don't have it yet. What was I going to do with it? Okay. So, so you know what Natalie was doing. She was, she was doing what she do. That oh, Hollywood yeah. stunt. Like, let me get in on this little thing. You know what I'm saying? Get these numbers going up. Okay. I get it. I respect it. It's, okay. it's a business. But okay. don't try to throw me under the bus like I'm going to steal from somebody. Well, I mean, in, typically the managers. In my house. The managers where, I mean, in my paid. son's house yeah. where I'm living. Typically the managers do get the payments and then they pay um, the artist. Or, right. That was I mean, nothing abnormal. Yeah. At so, all. I was um, totally. It, okay. it wasn't what she thought she was getting by far. I, however, convinced her to go along with it for the day, um, for the show, to get her music out. I know that's my son's motivation. Okay. Obviously, he is more of a, he's a quarterback. He doesn't want to do the job himself. He wants to ditch the ball. You go get the bag and bring it back. Okay. Period. So, basically, you were you were helping to get Krishan uh, to these auditions, to these meetings, things like that, to help her further her career. Exactly. And you're running the restaurant. And I'm sneaking out, running over here, you know, getting people to cover me to do this. Okay. And I work in the restaurant. I'm I'm talking about work. When I do a job, I don't care if it's sleeping this floor outside for community service. Okay. I'm going to give 110. percent Okay. So I'm and cooking this is in the there. restaurant I'm, that you co-owned, which is yeah, saying. full blown. So. Where did the break did the breakdown come over the contract? No, we 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 settled it and we she got what she thought and I you know I told him that they were wrestling with her about this but I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna ask for this try to meet him halfway. Natalie came in and was like, "Look, this is what it is." I already saw her stance, been there, done that, but I already saw Krishan rising also. So I'm like, okay, let's just take what she has. It's a little show that made her, you know, where she is. So let's take what she has and incorporate the music. When you get there, if they're not playing your music, don't give them nothing. I gave her instructions. I text her. Don't fight nobody. Don't do no extras. Do tw- do 20 worth of work. Okay. Do the bag that they're giving you so worth of work. So they gave her 20000 for the whole season. For the whole season. Oh, my gosh. But they told her, they convinced her by saying, well, these different places, venues, when we show up, they're going to pay us. So okay. she probably made, you know, a little bit here and there from the different venues that they showed up to. Couldn't okay. have been much. Okay. Wasn't by far what she thought. Okay. She so, wasn't even, first of all, she wasn't even going to show up. She wasn't going to go at all. That's why I ended up driving her. You see us on Shade Room online? Yeah. And I'm there with her and yeah. we're going through the house. Okay. She was not even going to go. She wanted to be under my son that day. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And you was like, oh, no. So the people started calling my phone. Okay. Like, can you get her here? Blah, 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 blah. You know, can you help us out? You know, we're trying to help her out. Blah, blah, blah. I gave them the whole nine yards. I showed up with her. I saw, you know, that she was the main character. I saw that she was getting ready to run the show. I called my son like, yeah, they're, they're getting ready to pull a fast one on her. Mm. So we went in. I made video of it um, while they wrestled her and robbed her. Um, and... I told her, I said, you could do two things with this. When you get there, make sure that they're playing your music. You know what I'm saying? Don't give them too much. Don't, you know, it's all about your music right now. So get your music out. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. And then she gets there and gives them a show. She gets there and gives them a a, a $100,000 show, what she was supposed to get. Okay. Let me, okay. I don't think, did we even hear her song? No, I didn't didn't hear any of the music. Yeah. But. So when what led up to the fight between you two? 
I'm going back and forth with him. They come in from out of town. I'm at the house, just got done cleaning up. My, my husband is allergic to dogs, so I'm already got two dogs that I'm trying mm-hmm. to hurry up, get in, get out, clean them up, do all this without, yeah. you know, letting him know. They come in with another dog. Now, mind okay. you, these two people don't clean. Okay. They full-blown celebrities. They need maids. They're her in between the two of them. So WAC 100 was, was, was telling the truth about Krishan's hygiene? I'm just going to say they needed maids. Okay. And I guess I was there, so Jaden wasn't there, so that will put me, the next man in charge, to make sure I'm not going to live like this. So Okay. So you're back and forth. um, I'm back and forth with him. I got my finger in his face. I didn't really realize that they were drunk until days after, and I saw the online of them on the way to the house. I didn't even know they were drunk when they were there. Okay. So, obviously, some of that is, like, enhanced, too, for sure. Like, he was out of character. He just kept being, like, real, like, well, you tripping? Like, why you, you know, why you don't, why you this and why you that? And then he started telling her, like, she don't even really like you. She don't fuck with you like that. And I'm like, why would you tell her that? I'm driving this girl around for you, doing all this stuff, you know, babysitting for you, taking her to her apartment to do this and Mm -hmm. that. And you tell her, why would you tell her that? And he's like, well, you don't really fuck with her. Ding, her trauma light goes on. Betrayal. Okay, so and that's so how did it end up with you? Because she said that she had responded to you throwing things at her. And that was when when I told him after nine times, I begged him literally nine times. I said, John, if you don't get her out of my face, me and him going back and forth, I'm not taking care of another dog. I'm not cleaning up this mess. You gotta be kidding me. I had already told her he can't have another dog here. Okay. Take the dog. Your mom's over there at your apartment. Take the dog over there. This was two weeks before she went and got the dog. So okay. if you notice on her live after our, all everything goes down, she says, my dog knew the assignment. Okay. Which I thought was very evil and manipulative okay. because she knew what she was doing because I had already told her I'm not taking care of another dog. So you think it was a ploy to kind of get you irritated and maybe get you to move out? It could have been. That's. Okay. I even text him and asked him. I said, well, "Did you guys do that on purpose? Like, is this part of your famous stunt? Like, yeah. for her to go viral? Was this on purpose?" Yeah. And he said, "No, mom. I love you dearly. I would never do something like this to you on purpose. In fact, I really liked you and pops here." Okay. So, so you're you're in each other's face. You throw the bottle, and that's when she starts. No, to- that was five minutes later. I said, "Get her out of my face." She's like, "My mom will take care of the dog. My mom will be doing all of this stuff. My mom gonna come in here and do all of this stuff." I said, "Do not compare me to your mom because your mom's on drugs, and we're two different people. John's not gonna let your mom in here, so forget it." Not even realizing what I said was also gonna push another trauma button. Mm. She took it as I'm calling her mom a drug addict. We got the same mom, been through the same experience. Why would I do that? Okay. That wasn't it at all. But people take things the way they are when they're mm-hmm. dealing with that trauma. Didn't even realize what I said. I'm still arguing with him. And I even said, like, he's like, well, she, she, I mean, where else the dog going to go? Something. I, I'm not cleaning up the dog's poop. You guys need to clean up after yourself. I'm just basically just going on and on with him. People were like, oh, you're in the internet and it's his house. No, I don't care if it's his house. I live here. Okay. I'm not going to live in filth. I'm not going to have, the, as soon as the dog ran in, it jumped on the counter. My husband okay. would have had it. We would have moved out that night. Okay. So I was already like, oh God, I'm already barely got my husband to go along with this. He's retired and don't have to do none of this. And I got okay. him doing all this stuff for you. Okay. You getting ready to bring this girl in. She doesn't clean. She doesn't do anything to help, <clears throat> to help with this house. And then on top of that, we got dirty panties on top of the counter. Mm. It's it's too much. Oh wow! And it's, yes, it is your house. Tear the roof off if you like. But you asked me to come here. You need to respect that I'm here. And then when I, I leave, I tear the roof off you, again. I don't see how how you did it. I, I, I'm I, not going, I really I love let, that restaurant, and I, I was really a hundred and twenty five percent. And this is a, your I, backup plan, and we're going to open a million of them across the country. And I was like, so like. This and, is this could be a good family and foundation. I love that restaurant from a condo. <laughs> like living with 
with Blueface and Krishan. Well, he started off paying me with dirty pennies on the ten, counter. Bef- well, now, now remember, she was only there like thirty days before all this went down. Okay, so it wasn't long. Okay. It wasn't so Jay, even. So Jay, Jaden was clean. Oh gosh, yes. She's she's just how we did at my house before, when she came to my house. Okay, I can see her. He put her videos online. She do keep a clean yeah, house. Yeah, she keep a clean and I house. Think that's why he she wanna... puts the baby to bed, you know, and then she has her time. You yeah. know, it started when I come come home from work. Yeah. She would be up drinking. So I, instead of, I'd be dog tired. Sometimes I just want to go to bed, but now I got to sit down here with her because John's not here and he's somewhere doing Krishan, you know, and I got to sit here and be a woman too. You know what I'm saying? This isn't my business, but I'm not just going to leave her here drunk at the table crying. So now I got to sit here and do this extra. Sterl's like, huh? my husband, like, girl, <laughs> he lit. My husband literally told me when she, Krishan came because she turned the music up. We good. How much time? Okay, cool. The first day she was there, she turned the music up at like seven in the morning. Krishan? Blasting it. Like we okay. weren't even there. Now, mind you, we get in from the restaurant like 1030. So we was trying to sleep till at least nine. And he was like, don't talk to her. Don't do nothing with her. Please don't say nothing to her. He begged me. No relationship. And I just disobeyed his orders. Okay. Because he already could see that something wasn't right. Like... So, so the fight was ultimately about her lacking, I guess, respect, cleanliness, and you just got frustrated. It wasn't even her. I'm talking to him. Remember, this is not my child. I'm okay. not getting ready to direct anything to you. So as I'm talking to her, she started talking to me about don't talk to her daddy like that. Don't talk to my daddy like that. You need to respect. So she's she talking about your son and her <laughs> yes, daddy? Yes, girl. I about lost it. <laughs> To I his mama. Like, Who's your daddy? <laughs> I'm like, we need to find your daddy, baby, because this right here is not your daddy. This is my son. I'm about to tell him how I feel about this mess right now. So I'm going on and on. He got this little evil smirk on his face, Hennessy smirk. And I'm like, get her out of my face right now before I throw so this she water bottle. with you about you talking to your Oh, son. yeah. What kind of mama? You ain't no kind of mama. You this, you that. My mama will be doing this and my mama will be doing that. You ain't, you living off my daddy. You in here rent free living off my daddy. And I'm like, I wanted to laugh, but I immediately, I was like, Carter, my grandson, I need you to go upstairs and lay down so I can talk to your uncle right now. I said, Jonathan, you got this girl in my face. Knowing you had another girl in here last night, if you don't get her out of my face, I'm going to act a fool. I had already threw the water bottle at this point because I was done. He was like, if you throw something else, I'm going to let her get on you. I'm going to let her get you. I said, and I looked at the water bottle and looked at him before. While I'm looking at him, all I feel is a bunch of Carlissa 1990 blows to the dome. Oh, wow. You know how she sneak people. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, what just hit me? I literally fell after like maybe boop, boop, boop. I was on the ground. And he didn't do anything? I, I, when I looked up and she kicked me the second time because I curled up in a ball, I looked up and he was like, like the Hennessy had like took him by surprise also. Like he couldn't believe it himself. I tell you he could not believe it himself. Jonathan has never raised his hand at me. He's never, ever even like... The in- incident we had four years ago was probably w- our only incident we ever had, ever. This is a person but who I, would, I'm just trying to figure out, like, how is he even still laying up with this woman that put hands on you? Did he money, try to get her off? You do some Did he try to? Things. So when you curl, oh up no, in a ball, when I curled up in a ball, he grabbed her like, like, yeah, he grabbed her pretty hard. So I can say like, dang, well, how long was you gonna let her kick me? But he definitely was like, you know, like, whoa, that's my mama. Like he grabbed her. For sure. And he was trying to tell Callie that, like, you know how mommy is? And she didn't through the... He's, he was on the phone trying to convince but Callie. But he even... He, he put it in her head that she could put hands on And him. that's why she did it. And that's what I told him. He says, I swear I didn't know she was going to do that. Like, you... But you definitely threw... threw um, I, you but that's threw not two, an excuse. That's not none an excuse. whatsoever. Because, like I told him, even if my mom... Even if somebody had... My mom had spit on somebody... I would take them. You you had 10, 15 minutes to take her upstairs and communicate with me how we do without her, especially I, I knowing what happened you, in the past. I just can't see my mom curled up on a ball, in a ball, um, watching, you know, my significant other 
put hands on her. I just cannot see that. And just a just a lack of the the lack of respect. And it's I don't care. even when my older son is like in my face, like talking crazy to me, he's quick on the draw, like, get out my mama's face. Like you just yeah. lost it that day. Like you forgot I was your mom that day. You and, now her and he could have just been really mad that I said you had another girl in here last night. Yeah, I mean, but still, there's still no excuse. Like <laughs> none you know? whatsoever. But let me ask you something. Um, the wow, I'm still stuck on you being curled in a ball, curled in a ball on the floor, blood dripping on my face. When I got up, what I could. What did I, your husband say? Oh my god, he came downstairs, and I was sitting on a chair, and I tried to hide my face. Obviously, I don't want my husband to go upstairs and do nothing. You come back down and do nothing yeah. to my son, which is why I never hit her back. I never even tried to hit her back. I never fought her back. I never tried to do any of that. I tried to like, oh, God, let me hurry up and get out of this situation. We was just in a home invasion. So my husband has got his license and he's on go to like do what he got to do if case may be. That's why we're here. So I was like, oh, my God, he's going to hear this and come downstairs and shoot everybody. I was for sure in my mind as I'm on the ground. That's so all I kept he, thinking. So what did he do? He came downstairs once it was all over and I was sitting on the chair and he wa- and I tried to put my head down so he couldn't see the blood and he walked over and picked my face up and he looked at John and said Did you let this bitch hit my hit, hit my wife? And they both ran. She ran out the back door with her dog and hopped a fence. And my son ran out the garage door and jumped in the car and they drove off and he, he drove off. So that's what happened. Um, did you, did you leave that night? Or no, did you stay? I stayed because they left and he called me back and we went back and forth about it. And I heard some type of remorse in his tone and I was like, you know what? I'm going to be out of here in 30 days and figure it out or, you know, whatever. But I was just making that decision on my own. My husband was packing shit the next day. Like, no, you know, I'm going to hurt your son or, you know, we can't stay here no more. So the next day we were going to leave once he went and just got things situated at the restaurant. But the entire restaurant has saw me online with a black eye and I don't know if Sterling might have talked to somebody there or what happened, but everybody quit like that day or the next day. Just took their shirts off and was like, no. You so were you worked too hard in here for him for him to let or allow because I mean they see Krishan. They see that it's a problem. Everybody could see that it's just waiting to happen type of thing like oh my gosh she's in your house too like oh my god like you know so everybody could kind of see like what I was going through I have a hard time feeling sorry for Krishan I don't feel sorry for her at all after her putting hands on you and him not doing anything and now to see them fight like like I can like Tina or Stevie J and Jocelyn. Well, he did her just how she did me. What did you think was going to happen? That's never going to leave his mind. So how do you feel? Even though he carries this facade, he's a very, very heartfelt person. But he, I mean, he pulled, he gave her alopecia by the hair when he pulled her hair out for, you know, going through his phone. I think she snatched the phone from what I heard. And this is what I be getting bits and pieces from the people that are with them. Yeah. She snatched the phone and she tried to run and he grabbed her shirt, but it was her braids. And it, it, he said he just tried to grab her. Like, obviously, he's having conversations with his baby mama that I'm telling you mm-hmm. would scare us to read. You cannot. That's a bond. Yeah, that's just that's not going ever going anywhere. I don't care. I see it in his face. Like, I raise my kids. Like, these women will go out and get a John, and they will have problems like I had in my house with my mom and her boyfriend. So, what you don't want to do is ever let these women that you've chose, because these are not the women that I would have chose for you. They're gonna go pick another John for sure. 
And those are the people that are going to have influence over your child's life. So by any means necessary, you better get to do what you got to do in that household and make that right. Okay. So And Javon and, eventually is going to get to an age. And if you see my grandson, he's already like bossing. And so that's why we see him always. Um, Cause here, here's what I got. Like when, you know, he obviously took the chain over to Jaden's house and then Krishan got on online crying and I was just like, obviously he, he finds Jaden a little bit more motherly than Krishan. Like he doesn't want to have a baby with Krishan. No. And that's why he, well, he, he, he convinces her he, to have he, he abortions. He sees Snoop and he sees, he knows the difference in these ice cubes and these, he sees these people that have substance. I've drilled it in his head. I, I, it sucks that Kanye got so a So basically, Krishan is a good time right now. I mean, in my eyes, I've, I, that's how I feel as and, his mother. Okay. Now, has he ever put hands on his baby's mother, J- uh, Jaden? Not that I know of. Okay. But, because I notice he reacts to her a lot different. But Krishan, I mean, I think how, he will how put, I think if anybody puts hands on John, I think he will hit them back. Right, now that's, that's really no excuse though. Yeah, I'm, I, mean, I mean that's why I say like he's a trained boxer. So yeah, but how do you feel about him uh, putting knots upside Krishan's head? And- I think I, I when I watched the video, obviously I was still a little hurt um, about being kicked in my head, so I chuckled. But I still texted him and said, "That's a no." Okay, so you guys obviously still have an open line of communication. When he's when he he'll he doesn't block me because he wants to hear. He knows that I see things and he trusts those things. Okay. So he ain't gonna block me. He hasn't responded since maybe a couple of weeks after the incident. But he tried to give me some bullshit apology, like I really liked you and dad here, like I told you, type of thing. Um but like she said, you can never, ever, ever, ever get your son back. Ain't that what she said? Yeah. You can never, ever, ever get your son back. So that's between him and God. That don't, and I'll sit here. I'm telling you, when it first happened, I saw Kobe's mom and her pain. And I really had to pray about it. Like, you're in deep shit. So you in some Kobe deep shit right about now. But then I remembered like, and I don't, and this is no knock to Kobe's mom and I'm not comparing John's Kobe at all. I'm just saying like the disrespect that you have for your mother will catch up to you no matter what. So him, you know, obviously her going to jail just a few days, uh, about a week ago, maybe two. Uh, her going to jail, them fighting in the club, them doing an interview with TMZ, Krishan and John saying that they're not going to fight anymore. He did lose a boxing match. I believe they gave it back to him. Um, no, I think her. he actually lost that. He had two. I, I feel up. that if these were, if you guys were white women, you know, this his career probably would have been done, you know. I don't think so. I think we're, like I said, I think we're at a time where men are women and women are men. And we have to respect those boundaries because this is what our, the law of our land has told us. I'm totally against that. Okay. But some of us women have decided that we are going to burp in public, fart on camera. We're going to be Krishan. Some of us women have decided that. And he knows what he's dealing with. And okay. if he want to be deaf in one ear like I did somebody for the rest of his life, that's on him. But I don't, by any means, I, I mean, I, do, I would never want to see a man have to physically hurt a woman. I think there's a lot of things that he could do. But when you push those buttons, like she said, when yeah. I threw that water bottle, you beat up an old lady. Okay. So you feel like it's karma happening with her? I don't Going feel like it's karma. And, I think we could pretty much see and him calling her a whore because he's never did that to his baby's mother, Jaden. He's never mm-hmm. called her a whore. No, he's he's never, never. She's never been with her. anyone else. Yeah, he never paid her to be. She's uh, never been with anyone but like, him. She's a whore. Everybody thinks she's she she down for me. I think he he's now 
it. Like he's not liking the persona or the the way the world is looking at Krishan versus him. And so him saying that, oh, she was, you know, fucking my fucking her the CEO or something or the correctional officer, I don't know. Um, or, you know, fucking somebody else. Like she's not this good girl that y'all see. I, I don't think Krishan is a good girl at all. I don't I don't even see I that. Keep I keep telling I, Callie I that and Callie I wants see. to believe there's some good in her and I'm like I think she I don't think she so. weaponizes her her past and uses it as an excuse to act an ass and to get in trouble. And, and people are seeing that like, and it's, you know, as an adult, I can see what the fuck it is. But when we have children and all this newfound popularity, people doing anything these days to get famous. Um, I see what's going on here. So she's, she's basically using her, her mom, that's a crackhead, her, 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 her destructive childhood as an excuse to get away and with yeah, doing the shit that people she does. Do that. And so, and I think, and Blueface's mind is like, well, she's, she's obviously making a bag at it. So let me get a bag on it, you know? So, um, I, I just feel like it's just so, it's just so toxic all the way around. And, you know, what, what do you, I know you say you see, everybody returning home at some point and you know what I'm saying? Getting their mind right. And we can, we can see here, like I said, y'all, y'all's fucking relationship should be a reality show just so people can follow all the components. But so that means that, you know, 50 cent <laughs> Spike Lee, I'm writing this series. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to leave nothing out. Yeah. The life in Los Angeles on both sides of the track. I, I don't I, I don't think it's something that we need to film with Krishan as a part of it. I mean, um, you can't tell the truth without you can't tell the truth and leave out, you know, the devil's part. I, and I'm not ca- calling her the devil. She could be as much Christian as I am when I was 22. OK, I've said some horrible things in my life and didn't okay. probably mean any of them. I think, you know, back on them and a lot of stuff, too, though, the the, the media creates this narrative like. Even for her, too. Sometimes I'll be like, ooh, she didn't say that. She didn't mean that. How do you feel about what happened to your daughter's husband and your daughter on camera? And seeing a video with your daughter with P on her back and everybody's laughing at her. I tried not to watch it until somebody sent it to me, like, two weeks later. Because my older son was like, he didn't watch it. He won't watch it. Okay. Um, Because he doesn't want to go back to jail. Okay. And I tried not to watch it because he told me that somebody told him, don't watch it. You're not yeah, ready. To it watch. Is a You're pretty, not ready to watch it. It is a pretty hard. So when I finally hard watched it, that's when I drifted into that Kobe thing. Like, you are going to pay for this. And I literally had to, like, ask God for forgiveness for the thoughts that I had, nightmares that I had. And remember that that's my son, too. Okay, because she went over to fight because of what Krishan did to you. Yeah, she did. And she would. And if my older son had watched it, probably would have been even worse. And I thank God every day I begged him, like, please. Has Andre, Has what? what is Andre? He stays off the internet and he stays out of the media. Yeah, and but he how does tries he take, to just. How does he take with the disrespect towards you? That, well, I he's kind of has... disrespectful, too, sometimes. He's dealing with a lot of PTSD from being in prison since he was 16. So your oldest son disrespects you, too? I wouldn't. There's Yeah, there's been some times where he's, you know, done and said some things that are very disrespectful. You know, obviously not the whole time he was there. Mm-hmm. He was my sweet baby the whole time he was there. Mm-hmm. But when he got out, he's definitely dealing with, you know... That, you know, that man that has a child that can't find a job and some issues that, you know, go behind that. My husband has to tell me all the time, like, you have no idea what it's like not to be able to provide for your mom, your family, you know, not to be able to get a job. I mean, even Walmart denied him. Okay. So, but I I don't think it's an excuse to. It's definitely, I I used to feel like that too, but. You have to respect people's trauma and we have to be, we have to, we have to like 
look at people for who they are, what they've been and what they've been through. And that's what helps me deal with what happened with Krishan. I don't wish no, <laughs> bless you. Thank you. Ooh, I don't wish no ill will to her at all. Do I think what she did to me was very painful? Okay. Yes. But it also made me look at my own children like this trauma is serious. Mm -hmm. Our kids literally need help. Like, they need help. No matter how we want to look at it, you know, I ask Callie, and Callie's like, you're always making excuses for your sons. And I'm like... I, I can see that. You think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I just know the trauma. <laughs> it, it, it's, again, it's the same thing that Krishan is doing. Web, uh, uh, using her trauma as a... Um, to In order to gain sympathy. Well, in my oldest son's case, he's not getting any sympathy for it. Um, you just said your son, your oldest son disrespects you. And you no, I didn't say he disrespects me. He I, 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 yeah, there, there, there has definitely been times where I'm like, whose child are you? But for the most part. See, that was another thing. You made, up an, you made an excuse for him. And they continue to do it because they're like, mom is going to understand. No, I don't understand. And I'm telling you, when I when I tell you, you see us in the media, mm -hmm. you see I don't give no fucks. Yeah. I don't give no fucks. I, 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 I even hate to see you like that. That's why I even asked you to come on the platform because I was just like, we, we got to, <coughs> I'm sorry, we got to really, really talk about this because it's, 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 it's so painful to watch. It is. And it's like, you're a beautiful woman. You're 50. You you don't look a day I'm, over I'm 30. just telling Callie last night when we Your was at daughter, she's one of so y'all fabulous Mexican restaurants. Like, this is not what I expected. I expected to be like having my ties on a beach with you fabulous babies going from game to game. And yeah. like, this is not what I expected at all. And, and I get that. But it's like, it's. You know, I definitely how y'all look and, you know, looks can be deceiving. Not to say that, but like, <laughs> I would I wouldn't expect you guys to be going through what you're going through. You understand what I'm saying? And so um, and I know we could sit here for hours and talk and drink wine hours. and do girlfriend time. I, that's why I love the wine cellar, because you could just kind of let it go. If it's an hour, two hours, three hours. Um, but I, I guess what I wanted the world to to get was a feel for the dynamic. And I think we got that. You know what I'm saying? I personally feel, and I'm going to tell you, woman to woman, mother to mother. You know, even though you you are 10 years my senior, that's okay, but I'm still a mom. I have a 15-year-old. Now, I don't have any grown kids. I have a 15-year-old and a 3-year-old, right? And, you know, I've been married for a very long time, 17 years. And I, my mom was a fucking fighter, right? I was a hothead. I never got into it with my... Uh, partners per se. So I've never been in a domestic violence situation with, you know, any partners that I was with. Um, I used to fight women a lot, not over men, but just you disrespect me. Like you gonna have to catch these, these motherfucking hands. You know, I, I remember dropping five bitches at one time. Like at, at it, it usually happens to women with mouth flag hours. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm not about to take, and I still have to work on, not allowing my ego to be bruised over what someone says. Cause I still easily get triggered. Even though I don't fight physically, I'll fight verbally. And yeah. that can, that can get me in a lot of trouble. Yeah, you know too. what I'm saying? So, you know, I know definitely my strengths and weaknesses, but you know, sitting here looking at you, I'm going to tell you, I feel that you, you coddle, you coddle your sons. They would say, and I don't. your daughter, your, poor, they would say, I don't, your poor daughter. Is coming to the rescue all the time because she is like, that's my mom. That's my mom. She doesn't have that relationship with you that your sons have. No, she's probably, but we, her and I are way close. I, I coddle her too. But however, I just she, cleaned her whole house yesterday. Exactly. So you, she's coddled. You're coddling. However, and I've had to, to you know, I've just had this, this same conversation with my sister because I, I tend to coddle people that I feel that have the potential to be more, but it may not be in the cards for them. And so I put my energy into the wrong people. And then when they, when I cut them off and they get upset and they want to attack me, it's like, I did that. I created that. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's I how I yeah. feel. That's my what sister said that the other day. And I'm just like, she's and, like, you love 
John more than you love Andre. And I'm like, I feel that you, what? <laughs> I feel that you, as a mother, it's only so much you can do being mom and dad. Now, not to say that they don't have their fathers. However, um, you are somewhat of an influence in their lives. And I feel that you haven't demanded the respect that you are earned. You understand what I'm saying? You shouldn't even have to earn it. You're the mother. But because you coddle them and you you kind of, like even Krishan, you're like, I, 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 um, I triggered her. That if that's your, first of all, anybody that says, don't talk to my daddy like that, that's not a trigger. She's, she's, she's being, she's, she's being pimped by your son. Right. And basically he just ordered his hoe. <laughs> on you. That's what happened. If she's saying, don't talk to my daddy like that. And then you, you're on the ground, like, you know, covering your face. You're not even fighting the girl back. And you get up and you say it was her trauma that made her do that. You just gave your son permission to allow it to happen again. No, because I, I honestly. You should have let your husband fuck. Th- you should have allowed your husband. You sh- your husband shouldn't even shouldn't have even had to ask for permission to fuck your son up. Because let me tell you something. I don't think. Man knows. to man. Man to man. There's just certain things you cannot relate to your son that your husband can't. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, and, and your husband's probably not the type to do all of this, mm-hmm. right? Mm-mm. But because you, you're coddling him, you're, you're, I, I, I can imagine what your husband is going through. Like, what the fuck? You handle this type of behavior with another supposed man, man to man. Because ain't nothing you can say or actually do to, to gain or, or earn that respect back unless he steps in. Because men that that take their, their anger out or, or can't control their anger, because I, I don't believe you're a man. Yes, a woman can put her hands on you. You can, def, you can defend yourself without hurting her. Mm-hmm. Like, you can obviously hold her down. And I'm not saying, I'm not giving an okay to the behavior, but you can obviously, you're, you're stronger. You can obviously hold her down to where you can protect yourself, right? So that you won't get hurt. Because yes, women can hurt men in ways in which it can't be reversed. Women have killed men. However, with your son being over six feet tall, he's a big guy. He's a boxer. You see what I'm saying? Like, I just feel that he lacks respect for women because you coddle him. And that's why he lacks respect for you. And you did it with your older son. And your daughter, unfortunately, she's so happy. She's just like you. She's just, she has your personality. She's all of you. She's just bubbly and lovely and just just all of this. And I see definitely where she gets her looks, where she gets her personality, where she gets her character. And I know you mean well, but like it is not looking good in your favor. And that's woman to woman. As with me coming to you respectfully in the most humble way. I'm not here to attack you. I'm not here to, you know what I'm saying, to judge you. That's just me saying there has to be another man to step in at this point to to undo what you've done. Because you did that. You've made it okay. My son would never. I, I, the, I, never, because I, I recognize what coddling is. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? You made an excuse. You and you keep making excuses for him, and that's why he is continuing down this this road that he's going down. I don't think I've made an excuse with him per se. I think I really I look at it from a psych a psych psychological perspective. Like, my words to him are not my words to you, if that makes sense. I understand. So, and my text we'll messages yeah. might be like, that was some, you know, like, it, it might be the worst, not the right language to use, but I definitely, like, and I'll I'll quote scripture and show him. That ain't it. But even the open lines of communication that you have with him after the act took place. I know that's your son, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes we, we got to shut shit down. Oh, I did shut it down. I shut it down completely until I felt like there's some, 
then until I talked to another lady that said her son was going through some type of that CT, something's wrong with her son. And then I felt bad. That's where you might be getting the call. And my, my sons will tell you, like, okay. no, uh-uh. Okay. And, and if he truly has I probably a have condition. Hit, I probably have hit them worse than the way she hit them. So okay. I don't think it's to the extent where you, you I'm giving you what I feel. After, after, like I said, after I've calmed down and the storm is settled but even, and I realize. But even from what we're seeing online, I know it's not anything that you probably want to hear. Right. But I'm not, I'm not going to tell you anything that's going to like, I'm not here to, like I said, to attack you, to judge you. I know it's your mom. You did the best you fucking could. Right. My mom, that. she did the best she fucking could. Right. You see what I'm saying? However, as, as, as men, there's certain language that nothing you can say will penetrate them because you're not a, you're not a man with authority. It takes another man for, for him to get it. I totally agree. This is not okay. And the fact that, and, and a man doesn't put his hands, a real man doesn't have to put his hands on a woman. Real man doesn't even have to lift his hands. You see what I'm saying? I agree and I disagree. Cause a, a, no, because a man knows how to. I agree. My husband has I... never had to raise his voice ever. And, and it, no matter how hard things get, this man has never raised his voice or gotten out of character. His father raised him that way. Mm-hmm. Everything can be solved, okay? But if you're but look, angry. But look what you said. His father raised exactly. him that way. And that's, that that goes back to who is ever in, is in your life, your husband. So if you miss that portion of your life, what happens? But here's the thing. In our country. But it, but it can be corrected. That's when, definitely, you call it cuddling, but that's definitely, we can't say that our, because right now you're putting that, you're putting so many people out there by using your husband as an example. No, because your your husband probably did have the proper father and proper training. I'm so glad that you said but that. But there are plenty of men out here that have been raised by single mothers who don't act the way there that are blue plenty face that is don't. Acting. There are plenty that don't, and there are plenty that probably that we don't hear about. They their have stories. grandfathers. They have uncles. They that's, have. That's not enough. Like you said, your father, your son, your husband's father completed that job but my listen let me say this too so wait let me add this in hold on my my husband is the son of a third wife so his father had three wives so he's the baby no he's not even the baby okay there's there's more (laughs) underneath so like his father has like over 20 something kids okay and was and you're talking about one man that was able to parent all of his children, and none of his children are in jail. None of his children are beating their women. None of his children are disrespecting any of their mothers. And this is one man, right? And all it takes is one man, whether it's your father or not, that's in the house 100%, because his father wasn't in the house 100% because he had other households to manage. Exactly. So I think we, sorry, I think we use that as an excuse that a father needs to honestly be in the house. I feel that there needs to be a man. Whether it's your husband, whether it's his father, that draws the line, and you have to let them, and not I agree. make excuses. I agree, for them. but if we think about if we if we put it in the perspective of scripture, God favors the fatherless. Yes or no? Absolutely. But, but if you dealing, know scripture, it, it, hold on. I know scripture, but we're we're does talking he favor about, the but fatherless? We're, but we're talking no, about. We got to answer the question so I, I can so that I can help you understand in the my perspective realm, in the spirit realm. He fathers he he favors the fatherless. Why? Because they are definitely missing something. That's the only reason, right? But if, if so, if when you we have say, a mother. No, That's no. not allowing people to come in and and and, and assume that position because it's not she's a, it's, coddling. It's not that she. You can't. First of all, you can't allow or disallow a father to come in. A father's going to come black, in black at will. Do it you all see the my time. sons right now. They're they're fathering their children, right? Right. They're not getting ready to let anyone come in and influence right. their children. Right. So that is the reason why he has favor over the fatherless. He's going to do, there's a special, there's a special treatment for them. Okay. And if we don't, even as black people, I 
totally understand what you're saying. And I totally appreciate, you know, your, your um, perspective. But if we don't, this is bigger than Jonathan and me and you and, you know, your husband and his father. If we don't figure out how to help the fatherless, we're all doomed because we can sit here and go back and forth all day, but that's still not going to give them the father and the leadership that they are missing, but that black, God favors. But black women, we are not the fathers. Exactly. So, but you're so still there's nothing assume, we can do to fill that role either. But you're still assuming the role. I'm assuming as the, the as the mother and, and the nurturer. The as the mother and the nurturer. The but mother that and the father. But that doesn't complete the <laughs> package. <laughs> We, that doesn't I I, complete the package. I Look think, at Tupac. I you said you, it yourself. I that think, doesn't complete the package. I think the you package agree. is void. I think it's a half a package. I think we agree. We do a good job. We agree. However, I think we're agreeing, but because I think sometimes, and I'll use myself as, as an example, because I I hate speaking for other people, right? I, I love to use my own personal Situation is an example. So because um, we're actually in it, Mm -hmm. it's hard to see outside. You're in it. Okay. I could tell I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you how I know you're coddling him. Right. Your husband didn't want to be in that house. Not after that. No, but you, you, you did say in the interview, in, in the interview was like, I have to, I had to convince my husband to come. Well, just as a man to go to another man's house, I had to convince him that it was safe. Okay. But he's a man. So the fact that you're you're a woman, you're very beautiful, you're his wife, you have the gift of gab, (laughs) you're going to get what you want. You pretty much not not always, yeah, but yeah. Get 90, 99 I made, I made the time. it. I, I made it was a good it would have been a definitely a good situation had not it turned out that way. So your your husband had reservations about going into another man's house, right? That right there alone shows shows that you are not allowing the men to 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 deal with situations as men because at the end of the day what you want what you need and what you feel everybody else needs takes over and that's what I'm talking about coddling and I and I say this because it even took my personal assistant my producer okay to tell me that I not I don't do that to my my family I'm very very cutthroat with my own family but people in my life like so called friends Right. It's a it's a nurturing type thing that I do because I want to see everybody win. I want people to like me. And regardless of how they treat me, I still want them to like me. So I make excuses for their behavior. And then when I get tired, I cut them off. Right. And then they go on the attack mode. This is what's happening with your son. This is what's happening with Krishan. You see what I'm saying? And if you don't allow the men in, that are in the situation to to play that role, this is why we as black mothers, we're 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 we are the most disrespected because we are not allowing, even if it's not our our significant other, because we've just lost so much respect for the man in general that we feel that what we say, what we feel, triumphs what it is that they're trying to tell us. In, in, in the way that we need to go. And so instead of you listening to your, your husband and saying, I don't think it's an idea, you convinced him to go. And then you're in this situation and you're still making excuses. And your husband tried to warn you as a man that this is not where we need to go. Now you're on a ground holding yourself and still making excuses for your son's and your your son's girlfriend. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Erratic <laughs> behavior. So that's what I'm saying. So I know what the scripture says, but we're living it, it, spiritually. Man still wrote that book, right? I believe in God totally, right? However, it was manipulated a lot to to fit certain circumstances. Like we should honor mother and father, right? It's a sin. However, your mother and father can. Um, lead you into situations that could hurt yourself, right? So what if your father uh, molested you? Where's the scripture that backed that up? You see what I'm saying? Like, 
So I'm supposed to honor my father and he molested me? He raped me? I'm supposed to honor my mother and she abused me or let or sold me into prostitution? Where's the scripture for those people? You see what I'm saying? So, like, I totally believe in God and I get where you're coming from. I've been in those situations and I still honor my mother. Okay, you can honor your mother, but listen, let my mama sell me into prostitution. There ain't gonna be no honoring in the world. And I don't give a shit what no. I don't know about that. You see what I'm saying? But I, I mean, I, I. So we we can't we can't we can't, scripture can be used for some things, but it doesn't cover all things, and that's a debate in itself. However, it's just no excuse for certain behaviors to continue. And I feel that your son is going to continue down this path if you don't allow the men in your life to say, you know what, this is what you need to do. Because I guarantee you, had you would listen to your husband or, or just anybody of a male, whether it's your, his grandfather, and you cut his ass off, even when he was successful, your son would have came to you on his knees to apologize for whatever it is that he did. But because you don't give him enough room and allow the men in his life or the world to deal with him, he will never respect you. And the people around him won't respect you. So when you say cut him off, how are you saying like for a period of time? Period, or whatever. You... What, listen, however it needs to happen. You've raised him. Your job is done. You pray, you say you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray. But this behavior, this this is this is making excuses. This is validating. It's the same shit that Krishan does. Oh, because I was raised this way. Uh, this is why I react this way. Oh my God, I'm just crazy. I'm just triggered. No, you're not triggered. Because I guarantee you. Had there would have been more severe consequences, you wouldn't act that way. So it's yeah, a choice. Those, those severe consequences have to definitely, for some people, they do have it's to It's a choice. You're you're choosing to do that. But it's it's easier for me to be able to, to lean back and say, it's my trauma. And you understand that it's her trauma. And your son understands that. Well, he, I mean, I could trauma. probably understand her trauma more than you can because I've been in that situation. Well, I mean, I come from a whole family of drug addicts. It's, it's not, see how you, I, 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 see my how mama, you manipulated that. I you started like No, I'm you not. You said a whole, it's a dip. Remember when I said, this but, is why I said in the beginning, I said, remember I said betrayal of a mother is totally different from a family member. Totally different. No, she no, lives no. in a totally my different mother, world. Listen, I don't, I don't put my mom. most people could ever imagine. And I, that's not an excuse. No, no, no. I don't put my mom out on this platform because she's not. Uh, an excuse she's not like a um even though my mom and I went through what I went through my mom drug abuse my, I, I was molested I was not protected my mom beat the fucking shit out of me not just oh I'm gonna whoop your ass because you did this my mom used to tie me up tie me up with my training bras and beat me for hours do you understand? And I couldn't go to school for days because I was whelped up. But look at the triggers you had. But here's look the thing. at all the fighting you I, did. I yes, as a as a child. But here's the thing. But what got me out of it is I didn't have anybody making excuses for my behavior. You didn't you, have anybody. You make excuses like you are a loving mother. You are a nurturer, but you nurture the the toxic behavior. I didn't, my, my aunts, nobody, they, they never nurtured or made excuses for my behavior. So you know what happened? I hit fucking rock bottom. I was going to jail. I lost everything. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So because I was left on my own, sometimes you have to walk away from these people and know that if there is a God that you believe in, that's big as you think he is, he will bring it all together. And the more you keep that communication line open, the more you take the social media and make it excuses or or say this and do this or try to prove yourself as the person you are they are going to continue down this road of toxicity because guess what my mom's gonna talk to me you can beat my mom's ass and she's still gonna talk to me she's still gonna love me that's my mom she's still gonna choose me before you mm. and then you coddling Definitely him after he beats the shit <laughs> he beats the shit out of her she beating the shit out of him and it's like 
Because but everybody look how, around look how them quick is we making... use, Look how quick we forget. Now, if that was a, a situation where it was a man, there was a woman, and the transgender thing, we would be all... Look how quick we change our perspectives when it comes to neutral gender. Like, how do we... We can't... They can play sports with us as men, but what, what how do we... What transgender come in at? I'm just saying, like, how do we... If one, if a woman acts like she's a man, I just said they're both beating each other's asses. But the first thing you said was he beat her ass. <laughs> well, he is, and he listen as he as, didn't beat her ass until she beat his ass. Well, either way, because they have people, but that's even to bet to to just because he's blue face. He got money. He got access. No, because if that would have went to court, she would have got in trouble. If you hit a police officer the way you hit. The way you hit him, you going to jail, and that police officer is allowed to put you down as a man. Yes or no? I feel that your son is that is, true or not? Your son is going to continue the behavior because you continue to make excuses for him, and you just did it right now. I'm not making excuses you for it. Are, I'm just saying because that's your baby. I'm not going to put my hands on a man that way and not expect for it to come back in return. And if we keep telling these young ladies it's okay to go wow. up and punch men, they're going to punch police officers and we're going to have more police brutality. And we everybody needs to respect each other, whether we're a woman or man, period. So we can agree to disagree. So if, if it comes down to him disrespecting you or his girlfriend's disrespecting you. I tell my daughter all the time, you, if you, you hit a man, something. he's going to hit you back. You cannot do that. First of all, I... I we, we're just going to agree to disagree and end this and go get some food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We we out of wine anyway. <laughs> Miss Carlisa. <laughs> it's been real. Zabo, boy, I'll tell you, we've been here, what, three and a half hours, okay? Um, I love you. I love you too, mama. <laughs> We in the wine cellar. Okay. We out. Let me call my husband in. He like, what is she doing yes. all the time with this lady? Yes. Callie didn't call me nine times. Like, what in the hell is you telling this lady? <laughs> I'm coming, baby. Oh, <laughs> she probably Lord. hungry. Oh, she fasting. Yes. <laughs> she fasting. She about to kill I us. I know, I know. She was supposed to eat at six o'clock. Hey, how are you? Oh, we're done. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, we I don't think we're going to be able to go. Let me see something. So I'm going to make the reservation for 930. How's that? How do we do? We just was in here going on. We, I mean, towards the end. Towards the end. 